What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me, but I just got home off of an early morning flight, right? First thing through the door, I want to see my family. I love my family. You know, I'm a family man. I'm an advocate for families, right? Second thing, I got to get that hot shower because I got to throw the threads on. The threads make me feel like a million bucks. But the third thing through my mind and all throughout the trip is that I got to have that Tej pack. Tej makes my life uncomplicated. It's uncomplicated skincare for men. The first way that I started specifically was their level one system. It's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. Two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Here's the thing. My favorite part about Teach Henley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use and in what order. They really make in the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin for men uncomplicated. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teej Henley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, you can pause and cancel at any time, and you get free shipping. And because Teej Henley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers an amazing deal, right? Just click the first link in the description and you get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift it's an amazing deal. You got to get started today. You're not out here trying to look like a dusty dusty. And if you travel as much as I do, which I'm sure most people don't, but you know me, I'm pushing my bag chasers in order to be in the top 5%, top 10%, top 1%. We got to make our lives uncomplicated. And T. Chanley is no better product. You got to look good. You got to smell good. And, and you can't be looking like a dusty dusty. Make sure you get started today. Click the link in the description. Get that Tej pack. Fill the Tej, my friends. What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. What up to all of my friends in the chat? I see Ari Reed in there. What up, baby? What up, Smitty? What up, True to Myself? What up, Alibaba? Alibaba said he's never met an Ebony that he thought should be taken seriously. Really? Your car is in the building. Miss Bree in the building. Mr. Undisputed. Uh, Compound Deck. Steven Barber. What up to my dog, Kojak Spaces. Um, e Senior. What up to all of my friends and family. Is CeeLo in the house tonight? Is C <laughs> From what we was talking about last night. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if she pop up in the chat. Shout out to her. Or the migrants have arrived in Detroit. I already covered that on the uh, Anton Daniels channel. I'm gonna need y'all to step into y'all, step into y'all greatness. Tech Noob says, "Shout out to you for reaching 225,000 subscribers and growing on the Millionaire Morning Show. I appreciate you for that, big dog. Thank you for holding me down. Thank you for the well wishes. I'm gonna be honest with you. We don't even we don't even monitor subscribers once they get past 100,000. So I'm so focused on the uh, After Hours channel that I haven't been focused at all. Shout out to you. I appreciate you, bro." I haven't been focused at all on the numbers when it comes to the Millionaire Morning Show or the uh, Anton Daniels channel, this channel. I've been just focused on the After Hours channel because it's just been such a great ride on that and what we're doing with that channel. We already did. It's only been one month and we already passed 20K. So shout out to everybody that's supporting me, that's always rocking with me, that support and rock out with the After Hours channel because we talk about some crazy stuff over there. All right, y'all ready to get started with the show? I'll read Super Chats throughout the show. Thank you, my friends. Um, Kyle for the bag chasers. Ebony need to stop trolling 40 plus. We're going to have that conversation, but I think I'm going to have this conversation a little bit differently today. I'm going to have it in, um, how do you describe it? In, in love. <laughs> I'm going to have the conversation in love. So we got our drinks popping. Life is good. I feel good. Head shaved as usual. I'm always looking good, smelling good. Teeth is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Lips is succulent. I feel great. I feel absolutely, absolutely awesome. So shout out to Trap. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Y'all ready to go ahead and get started? First and foremost, make sure you tap into the Patreon. Uh, that link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And then shout out to Teach Hanley. 
30% off your first order plus a free gift. That link is in the description also. Um, shout out to my partners over at Teach for always sponsoring what we got going on over here and always making sure that they got our backs. And I think that we uh, we about ready to get started. About ready to get started. Y'all ready to get started? All right. So the inspiration behind this live stream, obviously, I get a lot of my ideas when I'm riding in the car. So I was riding and taking care of business. Uh, some of y'all have seen the other video that I dropped where I broke down a new property that we build in no finance. And so we running it up. Um, and I'm paying attention to what the sentiment is on a regular basis on social media, uh, how I interact with people in real life. And uh, obviously, as we reviewed last night, we reviewed the video where it was Melissa Ford, Ebony K. Williams, um, L. Varner, I think that's what her name is, and then the chick that Michael B. Jordan dissed. Uh, when she tried to interview him and she, he remembered her uh, from her past and how it is that she she treated him, right? And I think that that was the big thing, right? It was a bunch of women up there. And when I looked at that, because uh, my editor clipped it up and he dropped it this afternoon on After Hours. And when I looked at that, that video and I started re-reviewing it, not just by what they said, but I started paying attention to everything. I looked at every single detail and that kind of gave me my insight behind why I wanted to have this conversation with y'all tonight. Um, and more importantly, why I wanted to speak to my women. It's a lot of women that rock with me, especially on the Millionaire Morning Show. Uh, it's a lot of people that rock with me in a lot of different spaces. But I really, really need to speak to my women today because I'm going to outline a list of demands that men have. I'm going to speak on behalf of my fellas. Now, I don't know about these simps. I don't know about the rest of these guys over here. All I can do is speak to my tribe, my people, my bag chasers, uh, the men that I coach on a regular basis, the guys that's making a lot of money, right? And they don't necessarily have no kids and they are at the top of their field and they, call, they come to me and they say, Anton, I do want to be married, but I'm not sure that I'll be able to marry a black woman. We're going to have some real truth tonight. We're, we're really going to get because I want to just give you solutions in addition to holding you accountable. I hold my guys accountable all the time, but they don't necessarily complain because by the time they get to me, they realize that they're looking for the results. And so they're not looking to fight back. And when I get on coaching calls sometimes and, you know, we have a conversation and the conversations are you exchanging with me what your thoughts are, me exchanging with you what my thoughts are. And I'm trying to understand you. But once I start talking to you. I'm not really looking for you to explain to me why you think what you think. I'm looking for you to listen. You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And so I come to you with love tonight. And even in love, sometimes you have to chastise those that you love. And you're doing it not because you want to, not because you want to see them go through things, but because you don't want to see them go through things. And so I'd rather let you fail in a controlled environment and let you get uncomfortable around me Rather, you go into the world and you have to suffer as a result of it. I mean, I don't know how many videos that I come across or come into my inbox on a regular basis. And it's some chick that's saying that she getting D down by another dude that don't even care nothing about her. He ain't got no resources. She young, dumb and full of you know what it is. And then all of a sudden, when she hit a certain age, because this is something that happens on a regular basis, two things that women are focused on when they're younger. They focused on their careers and they focused on having a hot girl summer as much as they possibly can. And so they're not focused on you. They genuinely are not focused on you. They're not focused on us. Let me revise that. They're not focused on us because I think that I'm a great representation of what an average black man is sort of like. Now, never mind the Rolex, never mind my mindset, never mind the amount of money that I make because you going to look at me and you're going to say, well, the average black man makes this, right? But again, I, I teach my guys, don't even vet a woman based off of where she is at this moment. Vet a woman based off of where she's going to be and whether or not she's going to qualify for where you're trying to go. Because women often say that they don't want to date based off of potential, right? And men don't want to be used. We don't want to be misused. We don't mind being used because we want to take care of you and we genuinely love you. Listen, if we didn't love you, we would not want to get married. Think about it. 
If we didn't love you, we would not want to get married. But this is somewhat of a civil war. And they keep saying, hey, we shouldn't be warned. We shouldn't be warned and we should just love each other. It's hard to love on somebody that got a knife behind their back. And the minute that you turn your back, they're going to stab you in it. Now, Anton, where did you get that analogy from? Because people tell you that they love you all the time. I mean, it's the person that you lay next to every day. That then is the person that take you to child support court. It's the person that leverage the kids against you. It's the person that call you nothing, say you ain't s, and all of this other type of stuff. How can you say that about a person? That you, we don't even say that about family members that's wrong. We don't say that about the crackhead that's in our family. We don't say that about the, the pedo, the one that we know like the little girls. He just never got past the point to where he would actually do something or we would let our kids be around them for an extended period of time. We don't even talk to them like that. Because we genuinely love them. And although we don't care for the way that they are, we understand them. And so we meet them with love, even if we trying to chastise them or we giving them this come to Jesus moment or we having this uh, rectification of whatever it is that they're going through at the time. We meet them with love. It's people that you ain't never had your back before in your entire life. They don't care nothing about you. But you know what you do? You give them grace. You give them space. You love them through it. We got people in our own family that will do us the dirtiest. They will sell us for a pack of cigarettes. It's friends that you got that's in your circle that if anything ever went down, they will sell you out for a corned beef sandwich and a Coke. Add extra pickles, even though pickles ain't necessarily supposed to be on a corned beef sandwich. As a matter of fact, remove the pickles, add sauerkraut, and then throw some mustard and Russian on there. They'll sell you out for that. You can be down with them for your whole life, and they will sell you out. So you can't tell me that you love us when at the same time, every time that we hold you accountable or every time that we have a conversation and we express to you what we don't like about what you got going on, you call us gay and you know we not gay, right? You say we want each other. You say who hurt you. You don't know nothing about us. Come on, come on, come on. Stop, stop, stop. You know, you got all of these ad hominem attacks. You want to see us down dirty. You want to see us down bad. But then at the same time, you asking a question and saying where all of the good black men are. They're right in front of you. You skipped over them. You skipped over them. You didn't think that they was cool enough. Remember when you had your boyfriend picking you up from school because he was older and he was out of school and all of the high school guys that was actually your age and would have been a great catch for you was checking for you and you didn't want to rock with him. Remember that? Now that guy has went on to become a married man or he's become successful and he's successfully single, meaning that he has options, but he chooses to continue to reinvest in himself. And he's patient enough to not let whatever it is that y'all y'all preaching to them in this simp chronicles that y'all got going over there to deter him from what his purpose is. And so he's patiently waiting for the person that he's supposed to get with. And it was supposed to be you. You're supposed to be next to us. We loved you, but you never loved us back. And then you want to ask us who hurt us as though you really care. If there was somebody that hurt us, then you wouldn't care anyway. It would just make you feel better because you just want to see us down bad. And how can you tell me that you love me when you ask a rhetorical question and you're not even really interested in the answer? You say that because you think that that's going to hurt us. You say that because you think that that's going to shut us up. You say that because... You trying to be hateful towards us, yet we supposed to be your step baby daddies for a kid that's not even ours. We supposed to put ourselves under duress to make sure that you're taken care of. And then y'all get on these stupid panels and y'all group together and y'all gather together. And the entire time y'all not doing anything but keeping each other more single. And then you finally get one. You got one today. You finally got one that meet all the criteria. Meaning that I am the very definition and the prototype of what being successfully married is. At no point can you ever pick anything apart from me and say, well, why y'all taking advice from him? Because he not married. Oh, yeah, I am. And I'm not newly married. I'm not minimally married. I'm not still in the honeymoon phase. I'm 20 plus years in this thing and I'm only 41 years old. And so when you don't like that, you say, well, uh, 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 um, he must be gay. Stop it. 
And then when you don't like that, you pick something else. And when you don't like that, you pick something else. And so it's never, ever enough for you. You want us to be feminine. You want us to be suckers. You want us to pander to you so we can sell you a new product. You easily finesse and every single guy that has come before me. All of these simps that has come before me, if you start digging deep enough, you'll realize that all they did was rebrand themselves in order to sell you more stuff. They're selling you books. They're selling you conferences. They're selling you juices and berries. They got their chick up there acting and pretending like everything is good. When in reality, if you dig long enough, you'll realize that he was beating the fuck out of the chick that he was just with. But yet again, he can come up here and tell you anything and you'll forget about it because you got the selective amnesia and you got the same mentality that you had in high school. You know what's so interesting that I find is that once people reach high school and you start paying attention to what's going on on all of these social media platforms, I know they got a new one called Vero. We still got Facebook. That's still popping. Shout out to all of my aunties out there. Uh, we got YouTube. We got Instagram, which is really a date map. Um, we got TikTok now. And so everybody feel like they need to get their rocks off, even though that, was nece that wasn't necessarily even meant for y'all. That was supposed to be meant for y'all kids. And y'all took that over and y'all finessed that too. And... You know, the interesting thing about it is that nobody actually grows up past their high school years, right? And so the same way that they were in high school was the same messy selves that they are today. And if you go in and you look at them, they're having the same results of whatever it was that they was getting. they just not as nice. They don't look as good. They've aged a little bit. We all age, and that's just normal, right? But they are the same messy person. And so by the time that they get to a certain age, their heart basically becomes hardened and they become more of what they already are. And very rarely can you really change a woman into being something different. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these women that's 35, 40, 45, 50 years old. And they're jumping up on these panels. And all they're doing is complaining. But that's not necessarily going to get you the results. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to present to you a list of demands from the fellas. On behalf of the fellas. Or at least on behalf of the fellas that rock with me. Because I think that I echo their sentiment when I'm trying to help you to understand on what it means to actually be a wife, what it means to be successfully married, what it means to actually put yourself in a position to attract the man that you want. I'm going to give you this list of demands that men are requiring because we're no longer subjecting ourselves to the worst things for us and we waking up. You don't like it, it's unfortunate. We're going to keep talking, we're going to keep helping each other, we're going to keep having each other back. It does not matter how many ad hominem attacks that you have, don't matter how much you think that you can hide your past, we still here. We're resilient. And we're loved and we're wanted and we want to have you, but you don't want to have us. And so we want the thing that's best for you, even when you don't want it for yourself. That's what love is. And the most important decision that you're ever going to make in your life is the person that you lay next to. It's not the house that you buy. It's not your portfolio. It's not whether or not you save for your 401k. It's not your children. It's not passing down generational wealth. It's the lineage based off of the person that you align yourself with. And it's the person that you lay next to every day. And if that very same person, if we had uh, some way in which we can see into the future as to what that person would be doing to us 10 years from now, answer me this question. For all of these guys that got these baby mamas, for all of the people that's going through family core problems, for everybody that had a chick that told you that she hates you right after she told you that she loved you, if you was able to project into the future and see what that looked like, would you still have done, done and dealt with her? And trusted her the same way that you was when you was laying next to her and she was lying to you when she was telling you that she loved you. Because in her heart, she thought that she did, but in her mind, her body, her soul, and everything that's within her and all of the people that she was surrounding herself with was telling her to hate you. She's trained herself. These women are basically going through this Western culture, which is an indoctrination camp, that's basically training you to be a slave to the idea that you're supposed to be by yourself and you're not. You cannot survive by yourself in this world, it is dangerous. Baby girl, listen to me. It is dangerous. This is no space for a woman. If you knew the danger that was hiding right around the corner that you missed yesterday, you wouldn't be sitting here on your high horse talking about how you can do it all by yourself. You dumb. You young and you dumb. If you knew the danger that's sitting right around that corner, and it's a person that's around that corner that prevented that from happening to you and it just so happened to be in a man's body. But then you will come out here and you will spew this nonsense with your ugly fucking mouth. Then you would retract your statement and you would have a different sentiment because you don't even understand the amount of the amount of pain, the amount of love that we have for you. 
the amount of sacrifice that we make and we don't even say anything, but we do it because we love you and we don't always express it with our mouths. And you keep talking about your fucking love language as though we supposed to communicate some way to somehow get to you. Wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up, man. This is real life. This ain't this ain't no video game. You can't respawn. You don't get a chance to do it over again. You don't get to be a reborn virgin. I don't care what they telling you inside of the church. Wake the fuck up. It's real life. Your children are dependent on you. They need you. Their daughters need their fathers. Their sons need their fathers. They don't need you to continue to think about what you want. Fuck what you want. You've been thinking about yourself the whole time, and that's your motherfucking problem. It's the reason why we can't get nowhere. Even if I wanted to bring you along, you know how difficult it is to pull somebody that's pulling against you, even if you're stronger? You know how hard it is to continue to bring you along, and then you the beneficiary of everything that we're doing that's great, and you sit there and you talk negative about men like they ain't nothing? When you standing on the shoulders of giants and everybody that came before you made the sacrifice, then you're going to sit there with your nose tooted up in the air as though you did something because you went to college and acquired a whole bunch of debt. You need to shut the fuck up and listen for five minutes so you can actually get some results. The reason why you're 40 years old and you still by yourself and you think that you can stand on your degrees, but really you standing on a bunch of student loan debt that you asking for the federal government to complain about and then to forgive. And that's what determines what you're going to vote for. That's continue to put us under duress. And that's why we got all these motherfucking migrants walking into this country because you can't think straight and you don't have a man to guide you. The problem is, is that you keep on talking instead of listening. What's wrong with you? Let me chill out for a minute. Because I want the best for you. I really do want the best for you. Why would I want you by yourself? I don't want you by yourself. I want you happy in a great space with great people around you, but your, your choices and your decisions Every turn is wrong and you keep on blaming everybody else for the for the space that you find yourself in. But you buy yourself because you can't help yourself and you're not built to go through life by yourself. I'm telling you. And then, you know what you do? You trauma bond and then you pass that generational curse, not wealth, that generational curse over into a young man that you birthed and you make him a son husband. And he don't want to fuck with you. He want to go off and live his own life. Because he realized at some point when he discovered a real man like an Anton from AntonDaniels.com that's giving him the game and helping him to understand exactly what being successful and successfully married looks like, he want that too because that's just in our nature. It's in our nature to conquer. It's in our nature to protect. It's in our nature to grow. It's in our nature to continue to seek out the thing that we have not yet conquered and then continue to go over that. And whether that be spiritually, naturally, financially, or whatever it is, we always want to become a better version of ourselves and then you then become the beneficiary of our greatness. But you don't hear us, though. You don't hear us, though. So I'm going to help you. Today, tonight, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to help you to understand what's wrong with you. Because every day that you get on these panels and you complain, you're not getting no closer to your dreams. Isn't it amazing how women can be so smart but so fucking dumb at the same time? They sitting here and they touting all of the things that they've been able to accomplish and how much more educated they are and stuff. But for some reason, they still can't get the results that they want. Ain't that crazy? The very nature of the thing that's going to define who you are. Nobody sat there and gave a fuck about who it was in yesteryear or all of the mothers or all of the people that came before you and was, was successfully married. How many of y'all actually sit there and talk about what they did for a living? Nobody fucking cares. They genuinely don't. Even men that get great jobs, we see it as a means to an end. It doesn't mean that we lean on it. How many men do you look at in, in history and say, oh, man, he was an engineer? Nobody gave a fuck. You are not defined as a man by what it is that you do for a living. You define as a man by what you do when you get the resources to make sure that the people around you is taken care of. You think that your degree is going to mean shit to anybody when you start to age out and you get older, it won't. It's just supposed to be a means to an end. It's almost like a high school diploma. Nobody give a fuck about what your high school diploma is. It's just a means for you to continue to be educated because you don't get credit for being able to take care of yourself. 
So when you lean on these things that men have already understood that mean nothing to us, because the position that we have is for you, right? The thing that we lean on and we say what we do for a living is to impress you, but it's not real meaningful when it comes to your legacy because nobody is going to sit back and go, oh man, he was a cybersecurity uh, professional or he was a cloud engineer and that's going to mean something. No, the meaning to what it is that we do and what defines us and what they say at a show funeral and the thing and a legacy that your kids carry behind is how you made life better for the people that was around you. Did you leave this earth in a better space had you not been here? So you leaning on your accomplishments. Don't, let, me, let me get into the list. Let me get into the list. <laughs> let me get into the list because y'all really not. Y'all not getting it. You're not getting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a list of nine to ten things. Uh, the demands that I think that you guys really need to change if you want the results. Is that easier for you? For these overly educated people? I'm going to give you a list of nine to ten things, maybe seven, I don't know. Let's see if it overlaps or something like that. Of the things that you need to do and the things that you need to change. Or you can be alone. Or you can be alone. And you can continue to do the same thing that you've been doing, which is really the, the definition of insanity, expecting different results. OK, number one. You talk too much. You talk too much. That attitude, that mouth of y'all. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you know that power, the power of life and death is really in the tongue? Did you know that the power of life and death can literally rest in your tongue? But you didn't read your word. You just be in church praying for a man every day. It's that motherfucking mouth. Boy, I'm telling you, bro. It's your mouth. The number one thing that you got to fix, ladies, I'm telling you when I'm coming to you in love, is that mouth. That mouth is out of control. You will talk some of the wildest shit that I've ever heard in my... Y'all talk like sailors. Y'all talk like men. Y'all talk worse than men. You will undress a nigga with your mouth in five seconds and won't even think twice about it. You come in talking about what it is that you want and what you got and what it is that somebody ain't and all of this shit. And you got your neck twisted and you snapping, snatching dreams out the air and you going off and you think that that shit is cute. I don't know where you got it from. I don't know where you learned it from because everything that we have and we learn is, is something that we embody. It's a learned behavior. But for some reason, you think that that is cute. You think that women saying, yes, bitch, is sweet. It's not sweet. When we see that, we repelled by it. Don't mean that a dude won't bust you down. But just because a dude will bust you down don't mean that he still wants you around him when he's done with you. Once he has post-nut clarity and he hear you talk, then he's going to want you to get the fuck up out of there until he get his stuff hard again. Your mouth, that smart mouth. I know can't nobody tell you nothing. You the one. You got the attitude. You got the position. You big dog in. You a boss chick. You want to say what you want to say and you want to make your list of demands. Your love language is over fucking communicating and talking shit. I know. I get it. I get it. But your mouth is the thing that is keeping you single the most because the thing that men want the most is peace. And so when we tell you, when we give you the cheat sheet and we give you the blueprint for what it takes in order to really be able to snag us and, and have our heart, you keep on talking. And if you be quiet long enough, you'll let her talk and then she'll tell you everything it is to know about her. You don't even have nothing that... We even need to discover five minutes after talking to you because you didn't already said everything that you want based off of something that somebody else told you and taught you how to talk to men. And I don't know how they taught y'all to talk to black men, but we ain't going for that shit. No more. We done. Your mouth is wild. Your mouth keeping you single. Number two. You ready? Having a good job or a business, or a profession, or making a decent amount of money doesn't make you better than us. <laughs> Revelations 6 and 19. 
Let me repeat it for the women in the back that had their earplugs on and they was listening to Nicki Minaj and Sexy Red. Making money and having money or getting a good job does not make you better than us. Let me tell you all of the ways that you really don't understand it and don't make you better than us. Y'all keep saying that y'all the most educated, but y'all the dumbest at the same time. Because... Most of y'all got these big old degrees and y'all got these high powered jobs and all of this stuff. And you carrying 200, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars in debt for a social worker's job. You got a communications degree. It's a fact though. Half of these hoes are scammers, but we just assign that label to men simply because men are the ones that's a little bit more overt with it. But the reality is that when you finessing a dude out of whatever it is that he got based off of the fact that you just offering him box, you scamming him. Because first of all, he getting a devalued product that he thought was worth A, but is really worth C. That's a fact, though. And making money. I know that y'all think that y'all got the bag. I know y'all think that y'all can go outside and y'all can get a bag or a nigga going to buy you a bag and get a bag, bag, bag. Get a bag. Bag, a lady. You gon' miss your bus. It's the bag, 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 bag. Dude, he got a bag, 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 bag. It does not make you a good person. And you're acting as though we care about your motherfucking job. Yes, we want you to have a profession. Yes, we want you to have a career. Yes, we want you to be successful. And... We don't even mind you doing well, but you can't leverage that and use that to try to emasculate or feel like you're better than the people that's around you. Your homegirls don't even rock with you and they don't even want to be around you. That's why every year you got to find a new set of friends because you keep on thinking the fact that you work for somebody else or you got you a little job or you got your little business, right? You went and got, you finally got you a house. You're in a position to buy a house. You got your credit. Now you paying the bank. Three times over whatever it is that it's going to cost you to buy that house. Because by the, by the time you buy it, you think that that's generational wealth. That's a liability if you don't truly understand the value of a house. But you can't be taught that because you don't want to listen. And you think that just because you got a decent salary, that that then qualifies you to look at yourself as better than somebody else. And even if you don't say it, we can see it on you. We can see it on your body language. Communication is 90% body language, 10% of what you say. What you say is just a qualification of what you're already doing. So by the time you open your mouth, we read you. We don't need to know if you got a body count. We know if you're for the streets. We already know. Before you open your mouth, we already know. So just because you got a mortgage so you can pay the bank an extraordinary amount of money, just because you got a 3.5% um, um, down payment and you got to pay PMI, but you keep talking about you own your home, I don't know one motherfucking woman, not one, not one, unless they husband left it to him. Because let's really get down to the thick of it. I don't know one woman, not one, that can show me the deed to their crib with no mortgage payment on it. Because see, just because you bought the house don't mean that it's really yours. They leasing that shit to you. You got a lease to own, rent to own. The same way that you got your furniture in there, you house poor. We not impressed by that shit. And listen, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't be financially responsible or be a purchaser or whatever it is. But I'm just saying that, listen, if you really want to get down to it, you're not qualified to stand in the shadows of giants that's been winning for a long period of time. You're just talking. You're not here yet. You're not there yet. I don't know one woman that can show you a house that they own that was not passed over to them where they paid off entirely their mortgage. Don't fucking talk to me about how you greater than us or how you think you make more money than us because the reality is that if you really look at the stats, you're still in last place. And that's not a good thing because we want you to be successful. You know, I know a lot of women that's from other cultures and some black women. I know some dope black women too. Let me give some of them some credit. I know some dope black women, and this is a fact though. I know some dope black women that make a lot of money and they still turn on their femininity when they get home. They take care of their business and they still make sure that they are contributing 100% of what it is that they got into the household because it's not about 50-50, it's not about 100-0, it's about 100-100. And because you then got a position and you already had bad character when you started to get a little bit of money and they gave you success and then you jumped out the window as a result of it. 
You got bad character. And the money is not going to fix that. Number three. Mutilating your bodies because you think that's what we want when we're telling you that's not what we want is not going to get you married. Oh, Anton, all of the men want all of the women that got BBLs. That's not true. We're telling you, we're literally telling you, hey, listen, that is fun to look at. Or it's good to throw some money at her in a strip club or maybe they'll bust her down. But that's not what we want. We want women that are not mutilating their bodies. We do not want you with tattoos all over your face. We do not want you with an abnormal belly button because you keep on getting lipo. We don't want you with lip injections. We don't want you with uh, all of this crazy look and hair and all of this stuff, right? We don't want all of this makeup. We're not interested in, you know, you having a huge bottom and then a small top because somehow you keep getting surgery and the surgery, surgery and just keep on messing it up. We don't want all of these injections into your face and all of this shit. We don't want you to mutilate your bodies. Now, just because you get attention and somebody is looking does not mean that that's what it is that we want for our wives. That's not what a representation is for the for the mother of our children. We are looking for good mothers. Not horrible representations for what we want our daughters to become. You got to think about that. You got to be a mother. Listen, you got to have our kids. You got to have our kids. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the sentiment of most men. Look at her. Zonia. Lies. They chase after BBL women. We don't marry them. Listen. Men fuck anything. They're rabbits. That does not mean that the men that are looking to get married are looking for these same type of women. Trust me. I, look, how are you going to fight me? And I am a man and I talk to men and I coach them every day and they tell me what it is that they're looking for. Why would I lie to you about us not wanting BBLs? See, you see what I'm saying? You see, see, you don't have your listening hat on like they told you in elementary school. You still telling us what we want when we telling you what we don't fucking want. How you going to sit here and tell me I shouldn't even be doing this live stream. I should cut this shit off right now because I'm not going to sit here and fight with you over what it is that I, we know is what we want. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and go back and forth with you over what the fuck we want. I'm telling you that we won't. We don't want women that mutilate their bodies. We don't want fucking tattoos on their face. Now, just because you got a hood nigga that's over here checking for a chick or getting her pregnant don't mean that that's what we want as great men for our wives. We don't want women that are mutilating their bodies. I don't know how many times that we got to say that. Get the, through your fucking thick skull. Don't sit here and argue with me about what it is that we want. I'm telling you that we, want, we don't want that shit. Jesus Christ. Let's recap. One through three. We ain't even got through fucking nine or eight or nothing. Number one, we don't want your fucking attitude. Shut the fuck up. You talk too much. Number two, making money don't necessarily make you a better person. So stop qualifying yourself based off of whatever your career is. We're not checking for that shit. Number three, we don't want your mutilated bodies. Okay? Because that shit catch up to you and we want our daughters to be natural. So why wouldn't we want the person that lay next to us to be just as natural? Now, I'm not saying that you can't get a couple enhancements. Go get your fucking teeth done. Cool. I'm with it. You got Kenny Smith knees? Go fix your Kenny Smith knees. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are some general things that you can fix. Cool. Go get your eyebrows arched. We ain't tripping off that shit. Put some lip gloss on or whatever. We ain't even really tripping off makeup as long as it's reasonable, right? Because we want you to put on F or we want you to give effort. But at the same time, we don't want you to look like fucking Wednesday from the Adams family. You know what I'm saying? Get your knees fixed. Whatever it is that you got to do, but we don't want you to mutilate yourself. There's always temperance and you have to operate within reason. So put your thinking cap on, okay? Number four, which leans off of number three. Too much fucking makeup. You look like a whole nother person. We don't even know you. Because then you got to remember, look, what you going to do? You going to keep that up for your entire life? You going to keep that up for your entire life? Huh? You going you gonna to wear makeup to bed? You going to wear 
bed proof makeup every single time that you wake up you're gonna have your pillow looking like somebody that murdered somebody it's gonna be red purple and blue we gotta call the police when we get up and we see you in the bathroom and we see our pillows is all fucked up you keep fucking up the sheets every single time that you lay next to me so you're gonna trick us every time you don't even look like a resemblance of the person that we thought that we met the other day at the coffee shop because we thought that we was getting the Alicia Keys version. And why y'all so hell bent on looking like everybody else? That's one thing that I'm trying to understand. Y'all are quite possibly, and maybe you just wasn't loved enough or you didn't have a father at home. Y'all are quite possibly some of the most beautiful creatures on the face of this earth. No cap, no lie. Y'all are... Look, I love women. I absolutely adore and love being around great women. But good God, Lord, somebody help me. Jesus, be a fence. I love being around great women. But don't y'all realize that y'all are some of the most great, the greatest creatures, the most beautiful, loving, phenomenal, especially black women. I mean, listen, no shade to my other ladies, but I absolutely love being around feminine, cool, peaceful, loving, good, sweet spirited black women. Y'all are naturally curvy. What are you mutilating your body for? Why do you have to have all of this crazy makeup on? You don't need all of that. You don't need it. Who told you that you need? And you know what the worst part about it is? I don't know no guy. That's sitting here telling a woman, hey, yo, you need to put on a whole bunch of makeup. That's shit that y'all get from each other. That's shit that y'all get from watching too much TV. That's stuff that y'all keep, keep getting from watching all of these makeup tutorials. You don't need it. And when we tell you, hey, listen, we don't like women that got a whole lot of makeup on. You sit there, fight with us, go and talk to your homegirl. She looked like the Wizard of, the Wizard of Oz. This other chick over there looked like a fucking dragon. And then y'all go over here and y'all put on all of this goddamn makeup and you think that just because we fuck you that that means that we want to marry you. It's not true. It's not true. We don't want costume designers. I don't know no man that say, hey, y'all, I want a costume designer because that's all y'all doing. Makeup and effects, special effects designers is in your homes. Guys, guys is out here laying next to special effects and makeup designers. You can go and work for fucking Marvel. You can go work for Disney. You can work for DreamWorks, fam. The way that you go out here and you do this wizardry, we don't want that shit. And then you go out here and you see that shit pop up on your timeline, and you're like, damn, that's a whole nother woman. And if you go to the comments, all of the women is like, oh, yes, whatever makes you feel good. Within reason, okay? That's number four. Number five, you're too masculine. You're too masculine. You're too masculine. You act like men. You talk like men. You walk like men. You look like men. You are men. You are too masculine. And stop lying to me and sitting here saying, well, it's my environment that made me that way. No, you a whole nigga, fam. And we don't want to talk to young M.A. I don't care how many bars you spit. You keep thinking that you want to be like us. Yeah, I'm the tomboy type of girl. Listen, listen, listen. We want feminine women. We don't want to argue with you. We don't want to fight with you. We don't want to keep going back and forth with you. We don't want to sit here and have conversations with you. We don't want to beef with you. We just want to lay next to you, fuck on you a little bit, take care of you, make sure that you're good. You know what I'm saying? Do all of the sweet things for you. And what you don't understand is that your superpower is in your femininity. You going back and forth and arguing and thinking that you're being tough, you're not getting your way. All you're doing is pushing us away. That's a fact. Even if we still with you, you're pushing us away. You're pushing us away. Your superpower is in your ability to say yes and, not no, but. All of your single baby mamas keep te teaching you to say no, but. It's yes and. And even when you agree with us, stop saying but at the end of it. Yes, baby, is your secret word. That is, listen, and say it in a nice voice. Listen, 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 listen. Yes, baby, is the way that you get to the bag. 
The women that is getting all of the money or is getting men to buy them or whatever it is that they want to buy them or getting their husbands to rock out with them, they are not bullying them. That's what you are. You are a bully. You are a whole man leveraging your femininity to bully a man instead of leveraging it to get what it is that you want out of that person as far as you being a beneficiary of his greatness. You can get the ring. You can get the cars. You can get the watches. You can get the kids. You get everything. You can get a man to do anything for you if you leverage your femininity. But y'all are whole niggas out here running around talking tough, acting tough, going back and forth. And then again, you think that just because a nigga hit your DMs that that means something. That don't mean nothing, bro. They still not marrying you. They're not giving you, you know, listen, all of these forever fiancés, don't let them fool you, family. Half of these women is buying fake, fake rings for themselves. Listen, check, check the Carfax. Check the Carfax. A lot of these women are buying rings for themselves and them rings are fake. They're not even real. Women are walking around with fake rings on a, on a uh, ring finger and they bought it for themselves. It's not real. They can't even get the man that they sleep with every day to marry them or even give them a date or a possibility of a proposal. And they are buying rings for themselves. Don't let them fool you into thinking that them being manly is then getting them the ring or getting them to success. And even if you do get married, I'm telling you, it's going to be a duress situation and y'all going to get unmarried very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. That's number five. Feminism is number six. You let these hoes trick you into being a feminist. Yet you still want traditional men. You can't have it both ways, baby. You cannot have it both ways. Either you're going to be a feminist or you're going to be traditional. Which one is it? You got to pick a lane. You got to pick a struggle. Now, it's pros and cons according to what they're teaching you from both. But I'm telling you, it's so much sweeter on that other side. Either you're going to be a feminist or you're going to operate in a traditional role. You got to pick one. You can't have both. You can't have both. You can't leverage and emasculate the people that's around you and then feel like you're better than them and feel like you got to compete against them when we're not even competing against y'all. you playing in your own lane. Look, any WNBA player that plays against the master high school basketball team, a state champion high school basketball team, will get annihilated. That's a fact. They stronger, they bigger, they faster. We don't even know y'all competing until y'all start to do something that's egregious or against the rules until you... Uh, mess up the rules of engagement, the thing that you advocated for. You know how I know y'all don't really even want to be feminist, that this was taught to y'all? is because when you then find yourself in a space to where you can actually retire or a dude that'll take care of you or a dude that's simping out for you, somehow, some way, you fall back into that traditional role, that, that softness that you got, the soft life. That's the new trend. All of these women want to have the soft life because they suffering. They suffering. Listen, bro, they getting their ass kicked. They getting their ass kicked out here in these streets. Don't let them tell you different. They are suffering. They got to get up every single day, Monday through Sunday, hustle, multiple different jobs. If you don't think that they suffering, even though they try to put on a strong face, I'm telling you, they are bussing. They praying. They are in church every single day, praying to God, God, save me from my plight that you've placed upon me. Don't y'all know that it was a curse to have to till the land and for women to have to suffer in a way that they suffer in a day based off of Eve beguiling Adam and also being susceptible to the serpent? Don't you know that the way that you live in a day, the, the further you get into it, if you really understand the word of God, the further you get into the ways that you operate, you starting to get further into the thing that you're cursed with. Y'all not listening. Y'all not listening. Listen, you were cursed when you go further and further into the very thing that works against you that's not even in your nature. This is one of the things that God said to them as he was kicking them out the Garden of Eden because he didn't want them to get to the tree of life. They ate for the, from the forbidden fruit and then they was, their eyes was open to the knowledge of, uh, of, of good and evil. And lest they actually get to the tree of life and he had to put cherubims around it. And then to protect them from the Garden of Eden. And then one of their curses was that they now had to operate in the very same way in what you're going into today. And you don't even realize it, that the further you get outside of your purpose, the more you get into whatever it is that the devil had for you in the first place. The serpent was the devil. And even the serpent himself had to be cursed 
to crawl on his belly. See, y'all don't read the word of God. Y'all didn't pay attention to Bible school. The further you get into what it is that you're getting into, the more cursed you become and he's giving you over into the affections and the woes of your own heart. And so when you then have to plead out for God and you praying for some kind of deliverance, you praying for deliverance against your own very nature. And because you don't really understand all of the covering that we may have for you, you now are in a duress mindset. And so everything you do, you doing it because somebody told you you couldn't have it. That's not the nature of a woman. That's the nature of a man. We are soldiers. We built for this. But you place yourself into the same role as a man. And this is one of the reasons why you can't get the results that you got because you can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's not the way that it works, baby girl. But because you continue to operate outside of your purpose and you want to be a feminist and you give yourself over into the woes and the affections of the devil, what happens is he then lets you have it. And sometimes y'all praying for your own demise and you don't even realize it. It's going to number seven. Now, number seven is very, very important. It's a simple concept. It's a simple concept, but it's very, very important. It's very, very important. Number seven. Sleeping around, but yet you still want grace. Listen, listen, listen. Your body is your temple. And the fact that you continue to give it over into and let the devil insert himself into it. You're defiling your temple. There is no such thing as a good woman that is slutting it out. It's an oxymoron. It does not make sense. It does not align. There's no such thing as a good woman that is slutting it out. <laughs> That's like saying that it's a great murderer. You're not a good man if you're a murderer, if you're purposely going out here and killing people for your own pleasure. There is no such thing as a good woman that is slutting it out. It's a oxymoron. It goes against the very principles of who we are and the nature. See, the one thing about the Bible, and the reason why I reference the Bible a lot, and I know a lot of people say, well, I don't read the Bible. You should. You really, really should. Because it got a lot of gems in it, right? And the one thing about the Bible is that the word can't go against itself. So let's say, for example, I'll give you an example, right? Let's say, for example, and ask your pastor, he'll tell you, let's say that you say, well, God, I was praying and God told me to go out here and be with this man, right? Let's say that, he, that, that you felt like you got that, right? Well, the first question that I would ask you is, how do you know that that's not the devil? And the reason that I would ask you, why do you know that that's not the devil is because I know for a fact that the word cannot go against itself. So when God says that you have to operate like this, and this is the way in which you show yourself to be pure, especially if you save, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, the whole idea behind the church is for it to be set aside from how the way that the world works. So you can't sit here and tell me that the word will go against itself because it doesn't contradict itself. So God is not going to tell you to go and do something that the devil then subjects, subject you to. It's not going to go against itself. It's not going to tell you to be unclean. It's not going to tell you to go out here and slut yourself out. It's not going to tell you, tell you to go out here and get a lot of experience. So when I see people then go out here and say, well, you got to go out here and see what it is that is out there. You got to experience it for yourself. That's not God. It's not. It's not him. It's not God because he cannot lie against himself. He cannot tell you to do something that's bad for yourself and call it righteousness. So when you go out here and you say that I'm a good girl, but then at the same time you busting it down for a real one, I know you lying to yourself. It's impossible. It's impossible to put the cart before the horse and then tell me that you operating within the will of God. You can't do it. You can't do it. And Jesus, man, Jesus ain't have a man girl. Jesus was married to the church. So shut the fuck up talking about what you don't know because you don't know the word of God. Just because God and Jesus had grace for whomever it is because he wanted righteousness to be available to the sinner and to the Jew and a Gentile alike does not mean that his main girl was a hoe. So shut the fuck up lying on God. You don't know. 
His bride was the church. Because you don't know the word of God, you sit here and you spook, spew this foolishness, but you ran up on the wrong one because I'm very, very much girded up and ready for any conversation that anybody want to have. The last thing I'm going to keep y'all have y'all doing is keep on lying like you know what the fuck you talking about. You better leave him out of this. Leave it out of this because you don't know what the fuck you talking about. You just talking. You talking. And this is what the problem is, is that y'all listening to a whole bunch of people that was out here telling you what it is that they think they don't know because they're not girded up. They're not really understanding. They don't they, they didn't take their time and understand and study the word of God before they came out here and start giving their opinion on a motherfucking Internet. You don't know. You don't know. Shut the fuck up before you keep talking about shit that you don't know. The word can't contradict itself. It can't. So if you sit here and you telling me something because you don't even need a, a prophetess, you don't need an evangelist, you don't need somebody to prophesy over your life for you to know what you're supposed to be doing. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You know why? Because every single thing that you're supposed to be doing is outlined for you. It's right there. The word is the word. It was the word yesterday. It's going to be the word today. It's going to be the word tomorrow. Don't sit here and try to pervert it to mean something that's different than what it really is. Let's continue. Number eight, you're not that smart. You just got more debt. You're not that smart. You're not that smart. You just got more debt. You think because you educated according to the ways of the world that that means something to the men that's around you. Just because you got an education, that's your reasonable service to be able to continue to take care of yourself. That don't substantiate who you are. You know, when I see people that qualify themselves based off of the jobs that they got, even if you're a man, I want to know who you are. When we get into a conversation with you ladies, we want to know who you are. We want to know what's in your heart. We want to know the sentiment of your mind. We want to feel you. We want to connect with you on a deeper level. Congratulations, you got an education. But all you did was get a whole lot of debt. And what they're not telling you as these women continue to have these conversations is that right along with all of this education that they got is a whole lot of student loans that they're asking for forgiveness for. It does not make the see what y'all got to start doing when y'all qualify these people, because the one thing that I know for certain is that a lot of women want to know your credit score. They want to know if you live with your mama. They want to know if you own your own home. They want to know a whole lot of stuff. Right. They want to they want to know a whole lot of stuff. But the thing that we don't start to qualify them for is whether or not they actually are prepared to be married. Let me tell you something, fellas. Do not marry a woman that got a whole lot of debt. You marry yourself to her. Bankruptcy will not discharge what her student loans are. Bankruptcy will not discharge whatever it is that she owes to the IRS. You are marrying yourself into a lifetime of ball and chains, and you are now going to be responsible for that. And she can't wait to live the soft life, regardless of whatever her educational background is. She is waiting for somebody to come and save her so she can use kids as an exalt, as, as a... Um, as leverage so that she don't have to work. You know, I was watching that um that video that recently came out with Ebony K. Williams, Megan, uh, not Megan, uh, Melissa Ford and all of them, right? And it caught my eye because as educated and as successful as Ebony K. Williams is supposed to be, and I believe that she's doing well. I believe that she's doing really, really well. I, I, I wouldn't take that away from her, right? She says something, and she said, you know, because somebody was saying something about men that are gone a lot and all of this stuff. And she was like, yeah, baby, let him get out there because he needs to provide. And a femininity came out of her in a split second of an instance. And then she went right back into her masculinity. Right. And I was thinking to myself and I asked the question when we were reviewing it on after hours. And I said, hey, wait a minute. If she's so caught up on the fact that she's so accomplished and she's so, such in a good space, then why does she need a man as a provider? 
I'm a C student. She's smarter than me. She's a lawyer, but I'm a listener. I'm a community college guy, right? She's a lawyer. If she's doing so well, why is she so gung-ho when somebody, because a lot of times women speak without thinking and that you can tell the real nature of who she is and what she really believes. And so I said to myself, well, why does she say that right away? Well, he needs to get out there and make sure that he provide and all of this other type of stuff. Well, wait a minute. If you're doing so well, then why would you need a man to go out there and be gone all day in order to provide outside of the fact that you really understand that you want somebody to be able to help you live the soft life? Interesting. So y'all let all of these women and these modern women continue to substantiate what it is that they feel like is best for you by having you go in and get a whole bunch of debt as a result of it. And it's not for every woman. And I'm not telling you not to be educated. But what I am telling you is that just because you qualify yourself for being smart because you got a piece of paper don't actually mean that <laughs> you smarter than us. It just means that you got more debt. Most of y'all. All right. Last but not least. And then all of these are in no particular order. So let me go through the first eight. Um, let me go through the first eight. Go back to do a recap for those of you that's coming in a little late. And then we're going to get to our last point, and then I'm going to open it up for the chat uh, for y'all to be able to call in and get y'all thoughts off, All right, especially if you disagree with me. I'm really looking forward to the people that disagree with me. Number one, this is the list of demands that men are requiring from women in order for y'all to really be able to qualify yourselves for marriage. Attitude. Got to make sure you got your attitude together. We don't want no unruly women. We don't want ones that smart with smart mouths. And we don't want ones that over talk. We want peace. Okay. Uh, making money does not make you a better person. And it certainly don't make you better than us. It just qualifies you to be an adult. Okay. Number three, mutilating your bodies. All of this extra tattoos on your face, extra injections, getting your lips punched in, BBLs and all of that. You looking like an ant. We don't want you looking like an ant, okay? Number four, you're wearing too much makeup. You're doing too much. We want you to give effort, but we don't want you to look like the dragon from uh, Game of Thrones, okay? Uh, number five, you acting too masculine. You want to be us. You want to act like men. We're not looking for a bro, right? We're not looking to go to jail and be with another man. We're actually looking to be with a feminine woman. Number six, you want to be feminists until it's inconvenient for you, but then you want to be traditional women. You can't have both. You're going to have to pick a side. Number seven, you're sleeping around too much. The word of God says that it will not contradict itself and tell you to do something that's not best for you, to live in sin in order to qualify yourself for heaven. That's not how it works. You need to preserve yourself and stop making yourself available to the devil to punch in your guts uh, in order to then skeet in you and then make you a single baby mama. All right. Number eight, you're not that smart. You just got more debt. Stop letting these women lean on whatever it is that their degree is in order to qualify themselves as being ready for marriage. That does not qualify you to be married, ready for marriage. I would rather be with a woman that don't have a degree and has no debt than a woman with a degree with a whole lot of debt. All right. And then number nine, I've given you hints about number nine throughout the entire show. Number nine, men don't want, and I know that this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but it is what it is, and I've never, ever ever in my life bit my tongue in order to make you feel good and if you able to get a simp then do it but number nine is very very much important as a matter of fact i will put it as number one and i know i said in no particular order but i'm telling you this right now men don't want single baby mamas Some men will compromise and take it. Some men will qualify themselves and have a blended family. Some guys was raised by their mama to actually think that that's okay. I will never advocate for, nor would I ever advise my man to go and get a single baby mama. I'm sorry. I know that you may disagree with me. I'm going to open up the chat for you to be able to say whatever it is that you want to say. But I'm trying to tell you that if you are going to choose, to, listen, y'all are having kids without any kind of thought to who it is that you're having a kid with. you having children out of wedlock. you with a guy that you never, ever thought that you was ever going to be with. Some of y'all are trying to get pregnant by the athlete. That's not our fault. Society holds us accountable for our decisions, and so should you. Now, again, if you're able to get a simp, 
and you're able to get a guy that want to rock out with you, then God bless you. Hallelujah. All right. I hope you got the Holy Ghost and been forgiven for your sins. But if you want to make yourself the most desirable for the men that you want, men do not prefer women that already come with a prepackaged family. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Men do not prefer to be with a woman that already came with a package. It's not our package. Whenever I go to the post office and I get the wrong package that's in my P.O. box, I hurry up and take it up to the front. That's illegal. I don't want nobody else's mail. I don't want nobody else's mail. Real talk. I don't want anybody else's mail. We're in the we're the only culture that actually sit here and try to validate that a woman that come with a new package with some pre-packages and some single baby daddies that already got that still going to have access to her forever is a good thing. In any other place in the world. You are damaged goods. In any other place in the world, I mean all the way over in Siberia and Russia, USSR, they consider you damaged goods. We the only people that take leftovers. I cleaned out my refrigerator today. I asked my chick. There was some stuff in there. I said, we ain't never going to eat this. I don't, I don't, I don't do remixes. I, I like the original song. I can't really think of many songs that I actually like the remix better than the original. I was listening to G Depp the other day. Special delivery. I want that. Special. I hate the version that got Puffy screaming all over it in the beginning. Ow! I hate that version. I just want to hear the one with G Depp. Black Rob. I don't want to hear the, the remix. I don't want to hear a bunch of people that's on the, on the remix that's trying to talk over the, I don't, I don't like the original. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear, hear the remix of For the Love of Money from Bone Thugs and Harmony. I like the original. For the love of money. Got to get that money, man. Money, man. Still the same. Got to get that money. I like the original songs. I like the Isley Brothers. I like all of the originals. When I see a package that come into my P.O. box, and it's not addressed to me. I don't want no extra packages. I never ordered that. I never ordered that. Sometimes these dudes is getting packages and these women is making believe that that's actually their package. That's not even a package. You missed that one. Some of y'all got kids that women is telling y'all that's y'all's. That's not even y'all's. Fellas, if you're watching this right now, I know you love her. I know she's really, really good to you. She hiding something. You might want to go and get your kid tested. Make sure it's yours. Make sure that's your kid. And don't get mad at him because he want to make sure that his kid is his. It's too much deceiving that's going on. Listen, if he find out it's his and, and everything is on the up and up, he's going to love you more. But I don't believe that any man should tie himself to trauma bond himself to somebody that's not even theirs. That's not right and that's not fair. Single baby mothers, it's going to be rough. But that's the decision that you made. And the one thing about men is we know that we got to live with whatever decision that we make in our life. Let me drop this link inside of the chat. Not going to give me no extra package. I don't want no extra mail that's not mine. I don't want no mail that's not mine. Try to get through as many people as I can today. All right, link is in the chat. I'm going to pin it to the top of the chat. I'm going to read some of the super chats also. Shout out to y'all. Hey, I just had a direct deposit hit. What up, though? Shout out to that direct deposit. For the love of money. I dropped the link in the chat, right? All right. Let me get my dog. Let me get my dog up. Freezy. Let me get my dog up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
There he is. Hey, Dizzle. Hey, Dizzle. Uh, what's going on, Freezy? Chilling, man. Chilling. What's, your, what, uh, what, what's on your mind, Freezy? What you been up to, big dog? I, I, man, I had a toothache, man. And, um, Did you? Shout out to your car. Man, yeah, yeah man. My wisdom tooth. I, I need to get it pulled, oh, but I just yeah, been yeah. yeah, I had all four of mine pulled. I absolutely you had did? all four of mine. Yeah, man. That was... Um, my my uh medication had wear off wore off by the time that, although I got a crazy video out there somewhere. My medication had wore off before I had got my prescription filled. Man, that was the worst yeah. thing I ever experienced in my entire life. Bro, that shit feel worse than a broke arm. It's it was the worst That's pain that I've fact. ever had in my entire life. That's a fact. 100%. That's a fact, man. Because my take, get it, take, was bro. growing in like this. It wasn't growing in up. It was going into the side. So it was growing yeah. into my other teeth. And so I had to get my uh, wisdom teeth removed because it was going. It was growing into and grinding my other teeth. It was one of the most painful things that I ever experienced in my entire life, bro. Yeah, they had to cut into it. They had to, like, put you to sleep and shit. Yeah. I went through something. Like, I had to go to sleep. I woke up crazy as hell, bro. I woke up crazy as hell. Free, I'm telling you, bro. Listen, Freezy, if I played that video for you, you'd be like, yeah, this thing is out of his mind. <laughs> nah, it, everything you said on the uh, on the list was facts, man. I'm trying to, I wrote everything down, believe it or not. Let me see. Damn, uh, Freezy, I really did. Have, I, this was, I got my wisdom teeth pulled a long time ago, bro. You'd be surprised. It's crazy. How long ago you had to pull? Uh, to, according to this video, I just pulled it up. 2014. Oh, damn. damn uh, it's, been a, it's been a minute. Yep, I got my wisdom teeth pulled in 2014. That shit was crazy, bro. I don't like the, I don't like the notion of being put to sleep. I don't, you know. Nah, you better get put to sleep. <laughs> you better get put no, to I sleep. Know, I'm going to have to get put to sleep because they, the doctor said they're going to have to cut into my gums because it's like the way it is. They can't just pull it. So You better yeah. get put to sleep, Freezy. Oh, snap. What you, what you was high? <laughs> what? Did they get them all out? Did they get them all out? Yeah, so yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was preparing as a kid for the next five times. What? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel like I'm head. <laughs> Shut up. You cannot say that in here. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm wet. <laughs> I swear, I remember, I remember, he <laughs> started me laugh at what was going on. It was stupid. It's like, it was dumb stuff. That's what happens when you get drugged. We just get some stuff at home. <laughs> so, you know, we wore it on the internet. I could probably find it. You gotta stay woke though. I am woke. Did anybody even left me? Oh no. man. Before. Am I sure? I, you know, I, wasn't, I wasn't in there. I was in there. I was in there. And rolled me like a rolling wheels. And stuck my throat in my fingers to make sure I ain't got no blood on me from busting it open. And you know, I ain't never seen them like mine. Because I'm not going to I'm still growing. And I'm already like 10 inches. And that's an inch when I'm, when I'm hired. And I got that more important than I got that growth. That growth. That wildness. <laughs> that I'm like, oh my Jesus, what do you feel in me? If you put a, if you put, if you do cover in me, and you put a deep cover attached to the floor bell, and you rip my inside out. When you see this video, you gonna be cracking. <laughs> <laughs>
up. You can't talk about that in here. What am I supposed to talk about? What's the rating? They didn't. You don't know. I'm positive. I'm sure they didn't. I didn't know. Because it was a man. It's one of the two I seen her. This is 2013. Uh uh. Men have sex with men. This is not 2013. Yeah. Why is my mouth not able to shut? Not able to shut? Yeah. Because it's swollen and it has gauze in there to dry up the blood. So I got something here and forget me to shut my mouth? Yes. Because they don't want you to swallow all of that blood. It's not. I already checked. So did? Yeah, I checked. <laughs> That's an ass. That's a so stupid. What? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I remember looking up the ceiling and I was like, this is pretty funny. And then I was like, ah, they trying to kill me. They trying to drug me. I'm trying to drug me. So you won't feel no pain. Do you have your chapstick in your purse? I mean, in your pocket? I bring no chapstick. Okay. Who's that? I remember having sex. I was having some sex. When? In your real life or my dream? I don't know. It was in your dream. I'm I certain. Do not. Don't call off with the lava like that. Well, you can cover that. Something wrong with your hands. Because explain. Because what? They could sprain my arm. No, they didn't. They did. They <laughs> put me in a vice. They could sprain my arm. Yeah, but they're not restrained now. Oh, Jesus. Why are you doing this? Don't you post this on your Instagram. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just doing this to you. I'm doing this for you. Yeah, I'm doing this for you. I know what I'm talking about. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You're not gonna remember any of this later. Yes, I And then do. when I tell you about it, you're gonna say I'm lying. Are they putting me in sleepy air? Are they putting you where? Sleepy air. No. So how are you gonna remember it? It's when it wear off. <laughs> you never know supposed to it? What? They did this stuff. <laughs> and I'm, they said, okay, you're, going to, you're not going to laugh. You know, this is laughing gas. Yeah. And then I was thinking to myself, it's going to be you, crazy. Oh, you know, shit. Stuff. That's and anesthesia or laughing gas? Yeah, I don't know what it was, but I was out of it, bro. You, were you laughing? I just giggled a little bit. They gave you that good stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Who should have been a dentist? Who should have been a dentist? I don't want to do that. I don't to do that. I do I got to do all the work. <laughs> that baby from Dorothy School called my phone. It was a monthly day yesterday. I told that whole girl from my phone. <laughs> it didn't happen over here. 
and wipe his filthy <laughs> wife. He shot and he prayed. That's all he knew. Shot and pray. Shot, pray, and take over three quarters of the dead. So stupid. Anyway, I'm ready. All right, that's enough. That's all y'all need. Y'all don't need no more of that. Y'all need. No <laughs> Dog, that is hilarious. You put that on YouTube, Jude? That was a video. It's on my. It's on this channel. Oh shit! Oh yeah, damn. that's from 2014 or something like that. 2014. Damn. I was holding my accountable back then, bro. I need to know <laughs> if that's anesthesia or is that is that gas? Laughing gas. I, I whatever it was, I honestly I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't remember none of it. So you woke up like that? No, I didn't remember having that conversation. Oh, okay, gotcha. Cause she was like, Anton, you crazy, you crazy. You was talking about busting down nurses. Cause like later on in the video, I was talking about how this nurse, I wanted to bust her down and all of that, whatever, right? And so <laughs> yeah. and so I was like, man, shut up. I wasn't talking about none of that. He was talking about the size of your dick and all of this other type of stuff. And I said, no, I wasn't. That shut up. So then she sent it to me. She sent me the video. She said, if I hadn't recorded it, you wouldn't believe that it really happened. I don't remember none of that, bro. None of that. How long uh, was the effect before you like broke out of it? I don't remember. I just remember being in a car and being driven home. Shit, Rita probably remember all of it. She probably remember how long you was, you know, acting like that and everything. Yeah, I was out of it. I don't remember none of that. Like, I don't, I don't remember none. I remember going into the office, and then I remember being in the car. That's it. Some people say, some people say that's anesthesia. Some people say that's gas. They don't know what's going on. Mm hmm. I'm gonna have to do it though, dog. I can't, I, I can't take this no more. I don't, I mean, I don't remember, like, it was the best thing ever. Like, the actual surgery, I wouldn't have wanted to do that, John. Like, awake and nothing like that. So, let me bring up Slim. I actually got, go ahead, bring him up. I, I, I want to tell you this. I got one tooth pulled off. I wasn't under nothing. Did, oh, yeah, yeah. No, you can get one, like, you can get them pulled, but they had to, like, do surgery and extract them out of my gums like they had to cut in no they, they they cut in my gum but they put like numbing some kind of numbing shit on my gum yeah but i still could feel hear the cutting and i could feel the cutting and shit but that's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. I don't want it. it's crazy but yeah i've been living with my life like an open book for a long time see that was 2014 that tell you how long i've been doing this shit man yeah what up slimmy right what up slimmy what's happening what up, big what up? what's the word Chilling, chilling, my guy. What's the word, big Cut dog? Guys, video. Falling. <laughs> 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 hey, yo! Happy belated birthday, Freezy. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> yeah, happy belated, Freezy. I seen you on the stream that. last time. It was, it was lit. I, I only got to tap in for a split second. Oh man, I, yeah. see, I appreciate it either way. Yeah, man. Yes sir. Yeah. yes, sir. What's up? What's up, Slimmy? What you been up to, bro? Man, just editing videos. That's it, man. That's all I'm doing, bro. Yeah. But uh, I was. It's crazy that you had number nine because I was literally just talking with my homegirl about this shit, bro. Oh, the single baby. Literally, yeah, I was. I was like, because it was. It was. It was crazy that you even said that because I was. It was. It, it hasn't even been an hour and a half since I got off the phone with her. Really? And I was just. Yeah. And oh, I was like, got you know, pushed back like a motherfucker, bro. No, 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 no. She agreed with me. Oh, did she? she? You know, yeah, no, because it, because the way I was saying it made sense because it was just like, so I was just like, women they got these standards for men, you know, the men that they that they look for, and you know, you got to have your own place, your own car, your own this, your own that. You got to be able to do things, do yep. this, do that, and 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 nobody ever thinks about men that don't have children like me, yeah. like. You gotta find a babysitter to take for me to take you on a date. You know what I'm saying? And then they they have a standard where it's just like, oh yeah, you gotta pay for my babysitter. Like I've had that said. No way, Slim. You gotta be kidding me. I'm dead ass. You gotta pay. Wait, 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 wait. They making guys pay for the babysitter now? 
Yeah, some women will make you will try and make you pay for a babysitter. And all that's it's not even a red flag. It's just like, all right, peace. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm I don't I'm not fucking with that. Like I've literally had that asked to me several times, just like, yo, you gotta pay you you know what I'm saying? Like I, I gotta get a babysitter, blah blah. And it's just like, well, I don't got no kids. So it's just like I ain't never heard that before, Slim. That's new to me. Man, bro. They wild in Cleveland, bro. <laughs> Breezy, you heard of that before? Yeah, I heard of it. But it's women who, for her to ask him that, she a, a guy probably has done that for her before, just just so he can spend yeah. some time with her, go out on a date. But well, what about her mother? No, he, like her dad, grandmama don't work, don't watch the kids or nothing like that no more. Bro, I, I don't know what be going on, bro. I don't know what a lot of times, a lot of times the moms, shit, they be tricking too, dog. They don't have time for these kids. The grandmas ain't like they used to be, and that just that's just evidence. There's just a lot of weak dudes out here because they it's dudes that's actually probably gave that girl money for the babysitter before you, bro. I ain't never heard of that know. before. I already know, I already know dudes yeah. be doing that. I already know dudes that pay that, that pay for the babysitter. They they gonna pay money, yeah, man. It's, Man, this hella dudes that be. What do the bro. babysitter cost? I, dog. Oh, I don't, uh, probably like I, I don't know I, eighty. Uh, I, I, don't don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't. Know. I don't know, G. I don't. Know. It's just, uh, crazy to me, bro. It's just like I'm just like, why would I have to do that? Why would I have to do that? Like, I ain't you know, never women, heard of that before, bro. This is the thing, yeah, though. Women gonna this. This is the position women think they're in. They women actually feel like they are the ones with the leverage. They feel like if you want to be with, if you want to hang out with them, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. That's what women love to say, and they feel like men are gonna go for it for the chance of possibly getting in the draws. Which, you know, a lot of times they just want to go out to get a quick meal and then come back home for to you know to the kid or whatnot. But women, women just want to see how far, how much power they have over men, and a lot of dudes fold, dog. Real talk. Wow, I, I am like, that's news to me, bro. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, bro. Like, so, like, it was crazy when you, when you said number nine. I already knew what it was when you said number seven. I was like, oh yeah, number nine gonna, gonna be the one. No kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of single moms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mom was a single mom, so it's not like I you ain't got to do it, Slammy, just because you your mom was a single mom, Slim. Oh yeah, but I'm just saying, like it's just, it's just a lot of women out there. They just got kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know a couple that don't. You know, but shit, man, they be wild. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. The dating scene is crazy, man. It got piss all in it. The dating pool got piss all in it, man. That shit is an actual. That shit is an actual thing. I think I I think I could I think I could win in the dating scene if I was dating. Oh, you might be able to. You might be annoyed too. You might get annoyed. You might get real. Nah, annoyed. you know what? Honestly, I I would never date. I just I just wouldn't do it, bro. I don't nope. blame. You. Nope. It, it, ain't, it ain't pretty. I'm talking <laughs> I'm talking junk because I ain't interested. But there's no way that I would ever put myself in that, out there in that street. I couldn't see it, bro. Hey. I tell all my married friends, stay like you are. Don't leave that woman. Make her happy. You know what I'm saying? Make sure she making you happy as far as like your relationship go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because ultimately make a person happy. You know, you know, they gotta want to, they gotta want that themselves. But like yeah, relationship stay fresh, man. And like it's cause it's ugly out here. I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna get married. But but I'm dog, dead. here's here's the flip side though. I tell women that if you're married, you need to stay married because it's more dangerous for women than it is for men. Yeah. Bro, like, yeah. the, out here in the jungle, they don't know if these dudes is having free calls. If they, you know what I'm saying? If they, they don't know. That's true. I like, like these, these dudes is different now, though. And hey, bro, they uh, don't even know if they great. <laughs> that's the point I'm trying to make, bro. And so, so women that's out here protesting with this feminism shit, like Anton was saying earlier, acting all masculine, bro, I feel sorry for the women because it's so bad. And um, the caliber of men, look what you just said. The woman asked you, 
She said, she told you, listen, in order to go out, you need to pay for my babysitter. The reason why she said that is because there are men that do that. These dudes is weak. These dudes is weak as water now, dog. I, and so I, if a woman is... I, I, can't say, imagine, I can't imagine a woman telling me that. I would just be looking at her so funny, like... She been trying you like that, right? I, you know what? Honestly, Freezy... I don't know, man. I I don't know. I'm I'm just confused, bro. I don't know what the fuck is happening right now. Yeah, bro, it's wild, man. I I I couldn't believe it. I was just like, well, that ain't that ain't really my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's not my issue. You know what I'm saying? First off, like, you already want me to pay for the date. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you want me to ask some extra money to pay for something that don't have nothing to do with me? I'm like, you want me to be able to pick you up, take you to my place? cook for you all this shit but you can't get a fucking babysitter like, listen man, it's man. a dude that just put in the chat i could be a stepdad if the situation was right but asking me to take responsibility for your past mistakes right out of the gate as well i i don't see i don't understand this see he already opening himself up to the possibility of being a stepdad i <clears throat> i am not under any circumstances open to the possibility of being a stepfather I don't know if that's gonna work. For me. Never, yeah, I, I, never. I mean, it would have to be like a situation where it was just. I'm not doing it. I, I don't even. Uh, my, my patience is so thin. Nope. Like soon as soon as this like this whole thing in the past start popping up, it's gonna be over for me. You know, it's gonna be over. It's gonna be all the way over. Like another man in the possibly in the picture. Like that shit is just weird, man. Man, I can't, bro. I can't. I just don't. I, I, I can't see myself loving you enough. I don't have no love for you. But you know what? I'm a, honestly, bro. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a real savage in real life, bro. That's coming. <laughs> I and you know, you know who I am, Slimmy. Like, I will tell somebody, <laughs> fuck, "Fuck you" in five minutes, bro. Like. Like, bro, I am no fucking joke. Even like Rita would tell you, she'd be like, "Listen, you the you the sweetest person, the nicest person I ever met in my life." But if it go that other side, if it go that other way, then that's it's that all Aries. it's a, all the way on that other way, bro. That's that that's that Aries gene. You know, I got that same switch. Yeah, <laughs> but and see, the thing about me is that I just see it from a business perspective. Like, I'm able, look, bro, I could I could have all the empathy in the world for you. But then make a business decision and say, "Hey, but but you know, I got I gotta go. I gotta yeah, I, can't do it. I can't see myself doing this. I gotta start doing that more. I gotta start doing that more. Fuck I, I that. I let too much hold me back because I didn't make a business decision. I was more everything is a business decision. Everything, everything is a business decision. Everything. I don't think that. I don't think that men should." Um, just initially be open to the to um living the rest of their life with a woman that had a child already i think men should be intentional i think men should be intentional uh finding a woman or or meeting a woman or being with a woman where you're starting a family together i do i do think that i think a lot of mindsets have changed for men because nowadays men just be want they just be wanting peace. Y'all talking about a single baby mama with one kid. Is dudes accepting women? Is is dudes accepting uh baby mothers with four and five kids? Woo. I seen a listen, I seen a black dude. He met this white woman online. I'm pretty sure y'all seen this story before. It was a TikTok, it was a, it was a viral TikTok story. A black dude met a white woman on like the white the, the white woman already had like six or like seven or eight kids. Whoa, 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 what? She had seven or eight kids and um he, he met her online. I'm pretty sure some people in the chat heard about this story, but he met her online. He wanted a white woman so bad. He ended up marrying this woman. He was showboating her off on social media. They showed they they was taking family porches. It, this shit looked like a basketball team, and then he ended up planting one in her too. So he got a child from her too. So it's like her kids plus his, and 
we we like we're sitting up here talking about a single mother with one child, bro. It's way worse than that out here. That's, That's what I'm saying. That's crazy. Six mm-hmm. kids? Mm-hmm. I'm not playing that game. So. What? Right, let Somebody me let me more. let me get some uh, other people up here. What's up, Slimmy? You got anything else you want to share with the people? Oh yeah, um, I, no, I do got something to share about the last time I was on. It's a line that you need to go listen to on 100 <laughs> with Drake and Gang. He called himself a pop artist. Just what you said with Drake, Drake and Gang? Yep, Drake and Gang, 100. Drake calls himself a pop artist. Do yeah, I think he's he's still. I mean, I still class, classify him as as all. As uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'll get back to that another day. Thanks for pulling me up, though, bro. All right, big dog. Oh, Salute, man. Right, oh, Appreciate you. Let me get oh, my yeah. girl uh, Ari up here. Ari. Hello, Anton. How are you? I'm doing well. What's up, baby? I just wanted to say I've been watching you for a minute now. Um, my husband actually introduced me to you. That's um, what's up. At first, I didn't agree with nothing you said because I just felt like he was way too masculine at one point. I didn't like it because of the way it was coming off. But then once I actually listened to you and I understood where you was coming from, I was like, okay, yeah. My daughter, she's five months. She'll sit in the living room and she'll watch you all day. Ah, so shout out to the daughter. Why you, why, you ain't, why you ain't agree with nothing that I said? Because I was in that mindset at the time. I wasn't where I am now. And I didn't understand. But Girl, I as love I you. Older, <laughs> as I got older and I became a mom, it was like, okay, I see it now. And I have no female friends. I don't really hang with people. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'll be 25 in October. Oh, you um, in a good space. Yeah, I'm doing what's best for me. And you in a good space. <clears throat> everything that you've said is 100% facts. I, I'm a female, so I can honestly say that that's what's going on in the dating pool. Uh-huh. There's women out here that don't care. There's women out here that's doing just about everything. Mm. I grew up in a household, two parent household, but he wasn't my father. Um, so I had a. So you had a stepfather. Yeah, I had a stepfather, but <laughs> he's still in my life to this day. He still takes care of me. He's what kind of hell you didn't put him through, Ari? Who? You. My daddy. Yeah, your dad. What you didn't put him through? My biological daddy. No, nah, the step daddy. My step daddy. Honestly, I didn't really put him through too much. He was one of those. I don't want to put too much out there, but he was one of them. He had what's to grow one, up. What's one of them? He had to grow up. Um, I'm gonna get a coaching call so I can explain it a little bit better. But okay, I got you. He was he was one of them, and I grew up seeing the verbal abuse, the the you know abusive side of everything. Mm. And I ended up going through that when I was 18 for two years. Yeah. And now I'm out of that, and I'm in a different space. So that's you married though. I How long have you been married, Ari? Me, we've been together for almost three years. Oh, okay, I see you, baby. <laughs> I see you. All right, that's what's up. I've been known her since I was sixteen, though. We just wasn't. So you you didn't mess him. up. You didn't. You didn't uh, miss out. No, on I, this is my first daughter. He's my only baby daddy. He's the father of my child. Yeah, I like that. I He's like actually that. been on your live stream a few times. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, don't say nothing. I got to figure it out. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> I got to figure it out. Now Now you got me. Yeah, can I, Ari, can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Uh, reflecting on back, um, reflecting on how you used to be and how you used to disagree with Anton, what was the catalyst for change? Why did you feel like you needed to change? I basically looked at myself in the mirror and I was in depression stage for a long time. I went through mm. suicidal thoughts. I went through actually trying to commit suicide a couple of times. And mm. when I moved to Texas, um, my husband was watching Anton all the time. I was like, who is this man? Why are you watching him? I don't like him. Turn him off. And one day I was just sitting in the living room and he was playing mm. and I was like, I agree with him. But then I was like, but, but then I was like, wait a minute, let me listen a little bit more and see what he talked about. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll listen to him a few more times. And then 
I can't remember if it was a Monday stream or it was the Million in the Morning show. It was, and I got to the point where I just caught myself watching him every day. When I went to work in the morning, he was on my phone, on the TV, all that. And then after I had my baby, it was like, he started talking to me. And I was like, okay, I got you. I understand. <laughs> I turned 24 right after I had my daughter. And it's like, I did a whole 360 with my mindset. Now it's just, I want to be able to live a legacy for her, show her what it's like to be a woman, um, bring back the femininity in the world because it's gone. There's no, in, it's, it's not there anymore. Did you I'm have there. to go to therapy too? No, actually I didn't, but I was talking to my husband yesterday and I said, you know, I kind of want to go to therapy because I feel like I do need to go to therapy because I still go through those depression moments. I'm still dealing yeah. with postpartum depression. Um, so I do have my days where I need to kind of sit down and recuperate. She just got home. Yeah, hey, listen, today. listen, you should, you should. I got a shrink. I got a shrink now. So if, if Freezy got a shrink, you can too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. I just felt, I didn't want people to look at me as weak because I got a shrink or I got a therapist, but I was like, oh, I work man. for insurance. So I deal with people every day who needs a shrink. I deal with people every day who just need someone to talk to. And that's what I do at my job. So, I mean. Why not? Mm. Yeah. Better than me. I ain't never getting no shrink. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I mean, you don't have to get a shrink if you like writing. Write it down. I used to write. Nope. I, used I don't to, believe, I don't I believe write. in writing. I used to sing. I don't I believe in evidence. Things. I don't believe in none of that. You don't keep a journal, Anton? No. Hell no. So Hold on, Anton. Wait, wait. Know. You don't keep a journal, but... Yo, you, yo, your life is basically an open book on YouTube. You don't keep a Correct. journal. Yeah, but my life is a is an open book based off of my life. It's not based off of my thoughts. Okay, gotcha. That's a different. I feel. What okay, so with that keep that close said, to what the. What do you do with your thoughts when you have what those you thoughts? How do you deal with them? I control myself. How do you do that? What do you mean? How do I control like, myself? What puts you? Not how do you control yourself, but how do you control your thoughts? Like, how do you put it in your mind? As, and when you get those negative thoughts, how do you, like, ignore it? What do you think of to ignore that thought, basically? Well, first of all, I'm a lot all, of people have their regiments or whatnot. It ain't a regimen. It's, it's, it's conditioning myself to think differently about how it is that I'm going to move. First of all, I'm never going to move based off of emotion because... You know, I, I, like I said, I operate from a business perspective first. So I'm always making a decision based off of looking at it from business because I don't pay attention to what I'm thinking about at the time. I pay attention to what the results can be afterwards. Right. And often at times what I find myself doing in the past when I was younger is when I woke up, I didn't feel the same way that I felt when I when I made the decision to do whatever it is that I was going to do. Right. So. You know, even when it comes to whatever I'm going to buy, let's say I'm about to go buy a car or I'm about to I got to sleep on it for a day. Because I want to make sure that I feel the same way that I did when I first heard about whatever it is that I'm excited about or that I'm feeling a certain type of way about, right? And so if you just sit down for five seconds, whatever that is, whether it's good or bad, is going to temper itself out. And then that's when you start to make your decision when you sleep on it. If you go into the dealership and you see this car, it's, oh my God, I'm excited. You'll pay anything. You'll assign anything to be able to get the car because you're excited about it, Right. But mm -hmm. if you sleep on it and you wake up the next morning and you realize, ah, that don't make no sense because I got to take care of this and I got to take care of that or whatever, right? And so that's why they try to get you to impulse buy because they want you to make an emotional decision. It's the same thing when it comes to um, the other side. Let's, I'll give you an example. Let's give you a real example, right? Let's say like, let's say I run into this chick and she bad as hell, right? And I know I can see it through. I know I can fuck her right then and there if I just wanted to, right? And... You know, let's say I just got into it with my chick or whatever, and it's and I, and, you know, I can get away with it or whatever like that. I will never ever in my life bust down a chick the first day that I meet her. I made that up in my mind when I was a young guy, because you'll you'll do things that you wouldn't normally do because you're not thinking, you're not clear headed, mm -hmm. and so I gotta sit on that shit. Right? I wake up the next day and I'm like, man. I ain't even answering the phone if that hoe called me. I would never fuck with a chick like that. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Because what yeah. that basically did was it gave me clarity. And most dudes don't think clearly. Most people don't think clearly. So 
I'll leverage that energy to do something else. I'll work. I'll go take care of some business. I'll go and record. I'll, you know what I'm saying? I'll go and make some money. I'll go out now, go have some fun on some other shit because I'll be thinking to myself. And then I justify it in my mind because then I'm thinking to myself like, well, listen, that could have cost me X amount of dollars and fumbles. But now I'm about to celebrate and I'm about to go and spend this money on something that's actually going to add value into my life. You know, so I don't make emotional decisions. I never crash out. I never make emotional decisions. And it's just the way that you train yourself. You train yourself to be able to sit on it and think on it. Even if something go really, really bad, and let's say I get really pissed off, I'll just be quiet. I'll be very, very quiet. Rita will know that I'm quiet, and she just see me chilling. And then you give me 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to snap out of it, and I'm going to be right back being a regular because I realize, oh, man, that ain't shit. Because I've already talked to myself. I've already convinced myself, like, man, I'm not even going to remember that person tomorrow. Or, man... They, they know, you know what I'm saying? They they don't even really know what could have happened to them or whatever, right? So I've come to peace with myself. I don't make an emotional decision and I keep it moving. Now, when it comes to getting angry, I think it takes me maybe longer than 15 minutes to snap out of something. I'm still trying to work on my anger. I have anger problems. I get mad yeah. quickly. A lot of things tick me off. Wait, but wait, let me, let me ask. Let me ask you this answer. So do you, you don't believe in um, marriage counseling either? What do you mean? I am the marriage you counselor. Know, what, what I'm saying is, let's just say if a husband and a wife are having, um, they, 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 they're having a lot of uh, uh, issues, divisions, issues in the house and stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it, it's not working out just from simply the wife listening to the husband. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Because I, I don't believe one. I don't believe that you should do that in front of them, in front of each other. What do you mean? Like I don't believe that you should do counseling as a couple. Like oh, if you don't if you don't have marriage counseling. Yeah, if you don't have marriage counseling, I don't believe that you should do that as a couple. Because what, what is it going to benefit her for him, to, for, for you to call out his bullshit in front of her? All it's going to do is validate her and vice versa, right? So I believe that if you work on yourself individually, then you can come together whole at when you, when you come to back to the table. You know what I'm saying? I think that yeah. most problems are solved on an individual basis. It, does, it shouldn't be solved as a collective, as a group. I need to fix me. That ain't got nothing to do Some with people you. people go into marriages also thinking that that marriage will heal them too emotionally and that's not the that's case a, that's a fact yeah i don't i don't believe a lot of my friends get married and they not they're not happy and they've been married for years i'm like I, why don't you just divorce him well he has this and i don't have all this well i mean i can't have friends like that i have no friends yeah. because of that reason a lot of people don't respect the fact my husband comes first my family comes first my home comes first if it's not you or if it's not, if it's not them i can't really awesome i can't do that I yeah, I don't. I don't believe in it. I, I don't believe in in counseling as a group. I'm not about to have him be super vulnerable in front of you, and you be super vulnerable in front of him, and then y'all look at each other fucking crooked, and he say some shit that he wasn't supposed to say because he got something close to the best. I believe in mentorship on an individual basis. I don't believe in marriage counseling as a group. Absolutely not. I know a marriage. marriage I know a married couple. Yeah, I knew a married couple that went to marriage counseling. Uh, They're going to have them breaking up. Bro, the, the husband ended up telling the wife. Mm -mm. Well, the counselor, the therapist asked the uh, husband, do you love your wife? He said, no. Mm -mm. She, she said, have you ever loved her? He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow. he, he crashing, he crashing out. Bro. Bro, she was devastated. Of course she was. She not gonna. She not gonna get over it either. There's a lot. And they're of still married to still this day. And they don't love each other. Don't mean that she got over it. She still That's ain't. Crazy. She's still thinking about it. No, she's not over it. She's not. I know she's not over it. So just because they exist in each other and they still married, don't mean that it that, that <laughs> fuck that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope. 
Well, the I reason why they still married, married is because be together no more. We still gonna stay together because I'm not finding. I ain't going with nobody else. I <laughs> talk that talk, Ari. You stuck with me, boo. <laughs> you ain't going. Yeah, that's nowhere. how she feel. And, and she said basically, well, she went to go see a lawyer, and the lawyer told her it's cheaper to stay in the marriage. See what I'm saying? Because, she there because yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's cheaper to stay in the marriage. Yeah. So All right, Ari. Right, let me let you go, baby. I got to bring up some other people, baby. All right. Bring- well, I'm gonna I'm gonna schedule that coaching call soon. Are you uh you cooking for me? I will. If you want to I got you. All right, bet. All right, I got. You. All right, okay, Ari. Right, I'm holding you. You know I'm holding you to that, right? I got you. I've been. No, you know I know where you at. You know I know where you at. You gotta watch my Instagram. I'll be posting my recipes and everything. I bet. I just posted some videos recently. I got you. I tagged you in one. Yeah. I know. I got you. All right. Well, all right, all right. Y'all have a good night. See you, baby. All right, you too. I love a lady that know how to cook. Showing love to the boy. That's Holly, cool. Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood. You muted, bro. My guys, long time, long time. What up, though? Chilling, man. Freezy, what's good? What's going on with you, bro? Man, man, chilling, man. I, you know, normally I work in the car as usual. Yeah. First off, I want to say I appreciate both of y'all, man. I appreciate, you know, this, 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 this is like when you was talking earlier today, man, and you, and you was like, you know, minus the, the, you know, the watch and all that, man. Too strong, horn, man. Because you know what? I think his mic went out. Yeah, I think so too. H Hogan, Boogie, what up? I see you in the chat, big dog. Salute to the Detroit. Let me get somebody else up here. Devonte. Yo, what up? Can you hear me? What up, Devonte? What's the word, big dog? Good. I ain't holler at you in a minute. I came in kind of late, but I see what y'all having a conversation about. And it actually was having a convo with my family earlier about some stuff like this. My mom and my dad. Mm. But I don't know what y'all think. It's like, so I'm 30 years old, right? Yep. And when I first started dating, whatever, let's say I got on, go on dates with black women. Today, when I go on dates with black women, at some point in the date, this question always comes up. Mm-hmm. Do you like white women? And when I was younger, that never came up. And I feel like in our community, the black men are afraid to call women out for this hatred to white women, because they only single out white women. You bring a Mexican girl home, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring a girl of another race home, nobody cares. And it's always the white women. And I'm like, why don't black men call out the women in their family? Because that's what I do. Because I'm like, stop trying to blame white women for you being single. and look why, at why? What's the point of doing that? Of calling the, the women out? Yeah. Because I feel like they use the Dr. Umar blame white women for taking black men and saying that black men just hate white women instead of them just looking in the mirror and saying, well, maybe I need to correct something. No, and no, I'm no. Not, I, 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 under, I understand what the logic is. I understand the idea behind holding women accountable. But I'm saying, like, for example, the women in your family, why do you call them out? I mean, because I just think they're using that as their excuse. For but why you, call them, you call them out with regard to your situation personally, though, right? No, no, I'm just talking in general because, you know, that's always the thing. You know, black men gotcha. married to white women is always a, a big issue. And I was telling my parents about how I was dating this girl from uh, she actually grew up in Detroit, born and raised in Detroit. But her family's from Bangladesh. OK, so her parents like had an arranged marriage. She grew up in Detroit, whatever. So I met her out here. I was in college at the time, not making any money. Uh, talked to her. I met her in my apartment. She was making between 10 to 15 grand every month with her uh, business she got. But her energy was never, I'm better than you, you broke, you can't tell me nothing. She was always, you know, smiling, feminine, all that stuff. Uh, She ended up moving uh, shortly after we met. And uh, a few months ago, I was dating, you know, a black girl, because in LA, I'm out of LA, you hardly ever run into black chicks. So whenever I run into one, I'm kind of, you know, happy for it. So I'm dating her. She got her own business, making a lot of money as well. And her energy was just always, you can't tell me shit. Mm-hmm. I roll in, I'm better than you. And it just, it feel, I feel like that's always the thing. So what do you think about that? Freezy, what do you think about it? Who, whose energy was like that? You said it was the black woman's energy was like that? Yeah, and I don't even feel like it's just because she's black. I 
Well, I was just saying, but how was the how was the woman's attitude from Bangladesh? Devante, I still see him in the back. He must be having a bad connection. Devante, can you hear us? Devante. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. What? What did you hear? What Freezy asked? Yeah, you said how was yeah. the, the chick from Bangladesh, right? Yeah, how was her attitude? It. She was always sweet submissive smiling happy like i would never do this but i could have called this chick at probably two o'clock in the morning and say hey can you come bring me some mcdonald's she would have did it all right so let let me let me ask you another question why you ain't still with her that's my next question because she what she moved back to detroit where you at where you located in la oh okay i got you i got you i got you like this is the thing. Like this a month, this, month and a half, two months, she moved back. There. Bro, so this is the thing about black women criticizing um, black men for dating white women, right? This is what we don't talk about enough, and I know this to be a fact. Black black women deal with white men, especially on the low, very often, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, bro. Let me tell you something. In the medical field, nurses. They sleeping with uh, white nurses, white doctors, left and right. <laughs> I, I, I know, but listen, I know personal accounts. Yeah, Person, I'm talking about black women that's married to black men. And so, a lot of times, you know, what black women do, they do it. Black men, they do it for different reasons than what black men do it for. Black men, most of, they most of the time, black men they outside their race for uh just for peace yeah you know what i'm saying just for peace and tranquility most of the time when black women do it they do it for financial reasons you know they think that they think that chad mm -hmm. is gonna you know have them more secure and all that kind of them stuff chicks be, them niggas be broke as fuck bro they be broke as fuck yeah they do but a lot of times but this but this this imagery and this color this uh this uh this race thing to me is just so stupid because to me, it's not really about race. It's about who raised you. Mm. That's what it's about. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so, that's why, yeah. So the reason, that's why I was asking y'all, because since y'all are older than me, and I was like, when I was 20, I don't remember this being that big of a deal as it is now. And I'm just trying to figure, has it always been this big of a deal? It just seems like the last, like, what do you What do you answer when they ask you that? I tell them that I don't like anybody because of their skin color. I walk up to a woman because I find her attractive. Because, and I'd be like, if I walked up to a chick because she was white, I would walk up to the first white chick I see every time I walk out the door. So I'm like, that doesn't. And what do they say when you say that? There's always kind of a, oh, yeah, yeah, and they'll change the subject. Yeah, I mean, I don't even see it as something that you should even worry about. Like, I wouldn't care. Honestly, I just wouldn't care. It would it wouldn't mean anything to me. And to be honest, I don't think you're gonna change anything anyway by by doing that. You know, don't even waste your time, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't. Dust even off, dust, the, dust off your feet and yeah. let your peace return back to you. How does this come up? Why does this always come up with every chick that you're talking to? But it's just with the black chicks. Yeah. I just think it's because of, you know, the stuff you talk about on the Millionaire Morning Show every day, the victim mindset and blaming white people for everything. It's just that everything is about race now. So and you I must be you must be leading with some part of a conversation that then is, that incentivizes them to ask you that question. I think no, you I really want my, a black woman. No, I, I ask my homies that, too. And they say the same thing. They like it's all, my, my cousin. He has a, a, a fiance. She's black. He's out in North Carolina. He, she's accusing him of like wanting to date white women it's it's just like a thing now with, with I, I think our generation of women that they're so worried about if black men are with white women they just randomly bring it up i i don't know i mean i just wouldn't care i just wouldn't care yeah and 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 why they always say black men really want white women bro white women really want black men <laughs> yeah honestly i just wouldn't i just wouldn't care bro like I don't know. It's something that you're saying that's incentivizing them to ask that question. There's got to be something that's incentivizing them to ask that question. There's some. I feel like it's something that's not you that you're not telling us. 
No. I mean, because I date, I'm open to dating people of any race, but I don't. You must, don't you must be bringing it up. You saying something, <laughs> conversation no, going a certain <laughs> way. So you telling me that y'all just be talking about rainbows and flowers and what's on TV, and then all of a sudden they ask you out of the blue, "Do you date white women?" Or aren't you, are I you? I think he was really, really in love with a black woman before. But why do they? Why do they just randomly ask him that though? I don't know. They do it in a, a, a funny, sarcastic asking way. I, I, I don't know why. Something you're doing. There's something you're doing. Like I said, it never used to happen up until about the last seven, eight years. Never used to happen. Now it happens all the time. It's something you're not, I feel I believe you, something you're not telling me. I was just wondering what you guys may have thought the reason why that was, but. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's what I'm trying to understand. Where is the, what is the conversation? Prior to them asking you that. Be having a, just a random conversation and getting along, and then during the course of the conversation, she'll just randomly ask the question, and it always happens now. So she just randomly be like, hey, do you like white women? Yeah, but she'll do it in a, yeah, so what type of girls do you like? Do you like white girls? Like, it's always that type of vibe with it. They know you used to date the girl from um, Bangladesh too, right? No, 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 no. Oh, they don't. Okay. Oh, that is strange for them to just. Yeah, it must. It there. must be strange. I don't know. That's weird. That's just not a thing over here. I guess I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, uh, um, I don't Especially know if, I, if I'm him. I just wouldn't even answer it the way that he answered. And I'd be like, you know what? I don't even really think about it. It ain't that I like anybody. I just evaluate each person, you know, for who they are. Or I'll just be like, you know what? Honestly, what you should say is just that, yo, I don't really date like that. I don't really be out here in these streets like that. If I was you, I'd say, yeah, I like that white pussy. <laughs> Not me. I would just no, be like, I don't, I, honestly, listen. The, 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 the thing that you say, the thing that you say in any situation, it don't matter if you're dating every single night. Be like, yo, I don't date like that. I don't really be out here like that. Anytime a chick asks you a question or they, they ask you about your dating life and stuff, you ain't got to say none of that. You ain't got to disclose nothing. Keep it real general. Keep it real G when it comes to how much money you make, what you do for a living. You find something that's just really basic and chill. Yo, I don't really date like that, to be honest with you. I'll be in the house. I'll be chilling. Um, or I'll be so immersed in work. Oh, okay. What do you do for a living? Uh, you know, and then you just give them something general, right? Even if you make a lot of money, even if you're doing something important, pick the thing that you used to do that wasn't as important to lead into the conversation. And just roll with that. Like, y'all y'all shouldn't be giving too much information with people that y'all just kicking it with or y'all going out on a first date with and all that junk. That's too much, bro. Yeah, I figure. That's how I would play it if I was you. All right, big dog. I appreciate you. All right, bro. You, um, uh, the sports show, you still going to do that? Nah, I ain't got no time right now. I'm tr I might do it because I'm trying to figure out. I don't know, man. It just don't seem that lucrative. I don't see the I don't see the audience for it, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right, bro. I'll let you, man. Appreciate it. All right, big dog. Peace. I, I think he leading with something, though, bro. It's something that he leading with that that's forcing these girls to then say that type of job. Because no, no yeah, girl, in my opinion, as far as I know, I could be wrong, just randomly just ask a question like that. Like, yo, you like white women? Like, cause, cause I don't know no guys that would ask a girl like, "Yo, you like white men?" Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know that. Sometimes, uh, in the hood, if 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 these if the black chicks think that you you're acting too sophisticated, quote unquote, or something like that, they will ask the ig ask a ignorant question like that. You know, yeah, hey, you must like white women or something. You know, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah, that is true. Let me bring up Justin. Justin, what up though? What's up, y'all? Y'all good? Chilling, chilling. What's the word, big dog? Really? I was just about to say, Freezer hit it, hit the nail on the head right there at the end. Mm -hmm. A lot of do to guys that they think are too sophisticated. They maybe talk a little too proper, or mm -hmm. they may be a little too too proper. Like a guy can simply wear, tuck his shirt in, wear a belt, wear a nice collar shirt, clean himself up. And just not walk around looking raggedy and they'll say oh you act white you must like white women and things like that man i used to work at a 
I used to work at a retail store, man. And I was one of only two guys that worked there. And I showed up, man, cologne on, tucked my shirt in and talked, not necessarily proper, but I just didn't walk around speaking ghetto all day. And all the women there, they just assumed I liked white women. They just assumed I was just this white guy. My name's Justin, so they say I got a name. I'm not walking around with some ghetto name or anything like that. So he's right, man. A lot of black women, they do that for absolutely no reason now. Yeah, because you're supposed to like Lil Baby. You're supposed to like Lil Baby and, uh, 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 you know, you know all the ignorant rap. You, that's what you're supposed to, supposed to like. Yeah, they... Like, I would I would say I don't like NBA Youngboy. I was a guy that I listened to a guy like Young Dolph. Young Dolph ain't running around saying I'm finna shoot this person or I'm finna rob this person or anything like that. And now all of a sudden I'm just not necessarily exiled, but I'm just looked at as, as completely different. Because I don't listen to Boosie all day and Webby all day. Man, Do I, Dolph, Dolph was talking his shit. He was talking his shit, but he wasn't on that type of time. And it, it, it's a little different. Dolph is more of like the payrolls of the world. Like payroll ain't walking around saying he gonna kill everybody. It's more getting money music. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I mean, I listen to Dolph, so I know what you're talking about. I listen to Dolph and Key Glock. Or get money music, I'm finna stunt on you, you know, things like that. But young boy, that's a different type of time. And that music seems a little bit more demonic to me. It's all demonic. <laughs> it's all demonic. What you talking about? Uh, on, on a deeper scale though, on a deeper scale, you know, women pay attention to communi to your communication. They women are very intuitive, right? They they like they wanna they pay attention to every detail when they when they're looking at a man or listening to a man. If you are talking about uh, things that's over their head, that's not a usual conversation. If you're talking about, uh, you know, let's just say you're talking about the stock market, you talk about politics, you talk about the economy or something like that. Okay, see, they want to talk about what's the latest shit that happened on uh, Real Housewives of Pontiac or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying if you ain't, if you're not talking about, <laughs> if, a lot of times women, they're not uh, black women, right? They're not ready for that type of conversation because of because of what the norm they center themselves around. When you go to, and this is a great conversation because when you go to social media, when you go to IG, Instagram, and all that kind of stuff, and you pay attention to a lot of the things these women are posting. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, staying current on what really matters in life. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of this shit, they talk about it. more, more black women nowadays, I guarantee you are keeping up with the beef between, uh, Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion. Then, um, you know, listen to something what Candace Owens has to say. <laughs> Matter of fact, I would argue that most black women do not like Candace. If they was to listen to Candace Owens, they would be like, "I don't like that coon." You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. So, when, so, 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 a lot of times they're expecting you to be on the same vibration, that Instagram vibration. You understand what I'm saying? That TikTok vibration, knowing the latest dance, the TikTok dance and shit like that, right? <laughs> so, if you're not on that vibration and you're talking about some shit. That might be uh, life changing. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna say you must like white women, and when that shit roll out of their mouth, I don't know, Freezy. They just don't. I don't know. It'd be something. It's something else, bro. Because it usually, oh, oh, usually, oh. what happens is the only time that I've heard that happen is when a guy in person may be criticizing things that they don't like about black women. Right, so they may be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? These chicks be talking too much or whatever. And then that's when they'll say, oh, you must like white women. You know what I'm saying? Because they sharing too much of their thoughts about what it is that they don't like about another group of women, right? And so that's the only time that I've ever heard that actually happen. But it could just be me. And uh, I've, I've never dated a white woman. I've never slept with a white woman. The last relationship. 
I was with her and I was with her for three years. And when we Yeah, but do you, when you talk, do you talk about relationships in general? No, I hardly ever talk about relationships. Uh, okay. I, I don't know what the man, fuck I'm, on there. Kind of and I don't really like relationships, man. I've never really I've never really been with Hey, you breaking up? You breaking up a little bit? You breaking up a little bit? That better? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, Justin. But yeah, like I've never really went up to a woman and said, "Hey, I want you know, hey, I like you. Let's go out on a date and all of all of that stuff." The all of my relationships have came the way you talk about. You know, I'm in a social setting. You know, me and this me and this girl, we're talking. And, you know, we just end up dating somehow, you know, a mutual, we'll have a mutual friend. He'll say, Hey, so-and-so she likes you. She feeling you. Hey, just go say something to her. You know, it's not, it's not that you got to actually try and woo her. She already wants you. All you got to do is just go up to her and talk to her. That's how the, that's how all of my relationships have worked. And the last relationship I was in, when we split up, she told me, she said, I don't think you're going to put the work in to get another black woman. And I asked her, what did she mean by that? And she says, I don't think you're going to work on things like your patience, work on things like being more understanding and, you know, things of that nature in order to get another black woman. And I was just so confused by that. Because what work do I have to put in to get a black woman? I still don't understand that. They well, all seem pretty easy to get to me, but that's just me. But it's that, a, that's it's the disparity. That that's the disparity. A lot of black women are raised that black men have to pass some type of test. Let's go back to the guy that said to the earlier caller that said if you want to. She, he said that the chick told him, basically, if you want to go out, you need to pay, you need to pay for my babysitter. You got to work for my presence. A mm -hmm. lot of black women are operating on this high horse. And oh, it's very oh, but Freezy, man, listen, bro. They will do it for the ones, dog. They will bust it down in the car, bro. That's a fact. These hoes is not. They they not like. I don't know where we getting all of this high class stuff, man. Most people, most people are broke. Like most people are trying to figure that shit out. Most people are just normal, everyday people. I don't really know where we getting all of this stuff from. Where everybody got all of these high standards. When did everybody get such high standards? You know why, Anton? Because they feel like they got what what men want, which is the pussy, and they mm -hmm. feel like men are thirsty, and then men will do whatever. To try to get to the box. Yeah. And that's hey, why Justin, let me, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get somebody else up here. I appreciate you, big dog. All right, y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, All right bro. bro. Uh, let me go to Fly. Fly Girl. What up, Fly Girl? Hold on. Let me see. What's up, baby? How's it going? It's going well. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm okay. Not so bad. So... Okay, I'm at quite the dilemma and I'm needing some sort of manly advice. All right. And um Do you so wanna be you wanna stay off camera? Do you wanna stay off camera or do yeah, you Yeah, because I'm in my PJs, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Go ahead. But um so what's your advice for a widow? As what's far the, you as gotta give me a contact to dating who's trying to get into the dating field again. What's your How long advice? were you How married? You... How long were you married? Uh, 15 years. You got kids? One. How 14. old is your, your kid is 14 years old? Mm-hmm. What do you do for them? Yes. A lot of things. <laughs> uh, I'm in real estate, uh, do a little bit of land development, and a lot. I have multiple things. Are you doing well? Yes, I, I do well. 
And not as well as I did when I was married, because my husband was a land developer. So it's kind that's of that's fair. That's what's up. And, and um, let me offer my condolences. If I can yeah. ask you a question, a personal question, how long ago um, did you become widowed? Four years. How do you feel about it? Like, are you still brokenhearted about it or? Well, I went through it for quite a while because he had cancer. So it's one of those, I had to watch him die yeah. before he actually died, yeah. if that makes sense. But are, like, you, um, are you still, um, do you feel like you're still trying to get over it? That you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, come to terms with it or are you? you... No, actually, I don't feel like um, I have to get over it. I just feel like I should. Uh, I'm not trying to replace him or get over it because I'm going to always love him. But we had these conversations when he was on bed rest and things of that nature. And he actually told me he wants me to move on and be happy. He was like, you're sweet and you deserve uh, you deserve somebody that's really good to you. And that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get to uh, heaven. I'm going to talk with God and try to see if we can send you somebody <laughs> that's perfect for you. And my daughter. So, you, you, I mean, you it was so, beautiful. You're such a, a sweet guy. spirited person and a sweet spirited girl. I think it honestly, for me personally, I think it's different for widows. Um, because I think that in a, in a lot of instances, people that are widowed, they often at times exemplify or they showcase the spirit of what it means to actually be successfully married, right? So, mm -hmm. I think that it's a different set of criteria. When I speak towards certain things, like, for example, being single parents and stuff like that, you're the anomaly. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're the exception. You're not the rule. Right? A lot of people have self-inflicted wounds. You, you in a situation where your circumstances, um, you know, dictated which, what, what kind of situation that you're in today. So it's a little bit different. So if your question is, should you start dating again? It's a catch twenty two, right? Because well, go ahead. Well, I'm listening. I'm listening. I did date again. I um, I met someone a year after my husband. Right when I graduated grief counseling, I met someone. Okay. And we were dating for about almost two years. I mean, almost three years. And what happened? But, uh, we recently broke up. It's. I kind of run them off. <laughs> Why? I have my reasons. Well, because he called me the B word and he tried to say that it was because I'm like, hold on, you're not going to disrespect me. Don't call me out my name. And he was Why like, well, that's a part of the name? culture. Uh, it was something small, but he'll go to a hundred really quick. I don't even remember to be quite honest. I know it was really small. And <laughs> He was, he said the wrong thing. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. You're not going to, don't, don't do that. I don't But do what that. did, what did he say? Like, what was his context behind why he said what he said? He said, it's just a part he, of the culture. He said, it's a part of the culture and said, I didn't, I wouldn't know because my husband was white. And, and but I'm like, I got brothers. They never called me that. Nobody called me that. Yeah. And he said, well, women call each other that all the time. I say, no. My friends don't call me that. I don't allow that. Is they he sassy? What do you, what do you mean? Is he sassy? Yeah. I mean, why would he just say, oh. I'm calling you that because oh, girls he's, call he's, he's all there. Trust me. He's, he's all there. It's kind of. Okay. Horrible. So what no. was it like random? Was it like three, two or three years already in? Did he ever do that before? Yeah. Yeah. No, this was recently because uh, we've been broken up for a little over a month, but that's when it happened. So he he did he said it after y'all broke up. No, no, he said it. That's what made us break up. They just broke up. And so, is he a good guy though? Is he a good per like in a general sense? He is. Yes. Did he, he ever is. put his he hands is. on you? No, I don't tolerate that. So he never put his hands on you. He is overall no. overall a good guy. He working yeah. and everything like that. Yes. And wait, did he? So he called you a he called you the b word out of anger. 
Yeah, but he wasn't even that angry, honestly. <laughs> well, it was one you of the admit, he just thought I was going to accept it. Okay, so, this so, is so, what I'm confused about. You remember calling, you remember him calling you the B word, but you don't remember yeah. what sparked him calling you the B word. You don't remember that. Not quite. I was, it, no, I don't. But wait a minute. And since I didn't remember that, I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe it's me. I, okay. So I tried to, to, get over that and he come back around oh that's why because i told him i i want i was ready for him to go home <laughs> and because we both had our own we have our own places i was mm -hmm. like ready for him to go home and he got mad he started to say i kicked him to the curb i'm kicking him out and i'm like well you got somewhere to go it's not like i'm kicking you out on the street like what are you talking about <laughs> you know <laughs> but he got really upset and call me out my name and I'm like, oh, you really got to go now, like quick. <laughs> Is so, it, and how long y'all been broke up? Uh, since December, oh, uh, December 1st. Is he trying to get back with you? Kind of. He, he got mad at that too, because uh, <laughs> he said it's a, uh, uh, he said, what's wrong? Do you, what, you don't want to be on my train anymore? I said, well, it's just toxic. I didn't, give me a second and let me, let me get myself together first because he, he gets mad at me. He called me broke. Well, no, that's what it is, a broke B. And I'm like, well, listen, listen. that's not many women doing what I'm doing. In normal I circumstances, me. I would usually say, yo, you need to forgive it or whatever. But I'm going to be honest with you. You got to set a standard because the minute that you start letting letting people get away with disrespecting you, um, and you seem like a very sweet-spirited person. I don't know if you get crazy in arguments or whatever or anything like that. You seem like, a, you seem like a sweet-spirited person. And the one thing that you can't, you got a daughter, right? Yes. You can't let nobody, you can't let your daughter hear anybody call you a bitch. I know. That's why I, I told him, you got to go. You got to go. leave now. And, and, and again, okay. like, you know, I'm all for sticking with it and all of that type of stuff. But see, I always say that I'm the man that I would want my daughter to marry. And I'm the man that I would want my, men, you know, the guys that I mentor to grow up to be like. And I would never call my wife a bitch in front of my daughter. And so... He didn't do it in front of my daughter, but it's just the fact that he done. I never had like. And I, I'm not. I'm not I, saying that you need to completely walk away from it, but what I am saying is that you need to set a. If this is if this is something that you're looking to get in get with, then you need to set a boundary. Can I? Can I? Can I be honest? Like you said, you was dating him three years, and that was the first time he called you a b b word. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. So. The way I'm breaking it down in my head, obviously we don't have all of the, the story, but uh, you said that you was telling him it's you know it's time for him to go home or whatnot, you know. But but um, I'm guessing it was a reason why you was telling him it's time to go home, and I'm guessing you had probably had an attitude when you told. It, it, I'm guessing it, it was a tumultuous moment. You know what I'm saying? No, and he probably, I'll tell he, you. Let's, let's say hi. Okay, let's, yeah, I want to hear what happened. What happened? Well, I told you I have multiple streams of income. So I, I kind of, when I get bored, I, I door dash too. I just, I like, you know, keeping myself active. Yeah. So I said, okay, well. Are you hustling? You was hustling? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, um, I'm going to door dash. You want to go with me? He's like, no, I don't. I'm like, okay, well, it's time for you to go home because, you know, I'm, I got to get to it. You know? Yeah, 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 and, he, yeah, yeah. and he got mad at me over that. And because I, and, I said, that's what it was. I said, I don't feel comfortable because he was like, you can go on. I said, no, I don't feel comfortable with you at the house while I'm, while I'm out hustling. Like, it just don't feel right that my guy is laid up watching tv and i'm out here trying to get it in 
Yeah. And he's like, but I don't have to. I mean, I'm already rich. I'm like, but so? Is he rich? <laughs> I mean, he's he's well off. Yeah. I mean, he probably was thinking, man, we've been fucking for three years. And you saying I got to, what? I got to go home. You kicking me out. We've been fucking for three years. <laughs> that, that, that's that's what he said. That's what he said to himself. He said, listen, I don't got to go to work. I'm well off. And we've been fucking for three years. And you kicking me out like I'm a child. That's probably what he was saying. Listen, all I know is this. I don't really care what the context is. Um... You you got a choice, right? You don't really have. It's not a it's not a bad move either way. If you decide that you don't want to be there, then you don't want to be there. If you decide that that you still want to rock with him, then you want to rock with him. But here's the thing, and this is what I advocate for. I don't really care about the additional context. That, that doesn't have any bearing on this. You got to draw the boundary, and if you say, "Hey, listen," you know what I'm saying? Is is Probably something small. It's probably something we can get past. But I just need you to not call me out of my name anymore on that type of wave. And you got to do that because you can't be getting called out of your name like that. That's just flat out disrespect. So if you decide that you want to rock with him, you got to you got to draw the boundary, especially if you've never called him out of his name or anything like that. And if no. you don't, and if you don't, then move on. But you got to make a decision. But either way, you need to establish. You need to establish whatever that is that you don't want happening to you. And you got to nip it in the bud because the minute that you let people get away with it, they'll do it again. Right. Flat out. And that's the thing. I respect him. I, he's my king, you know? But Oh, it sounds like you're still rocking with him. Then rock with him. Well, no, I mean, I haven't. I blocked him from my phone, so. <laughs> oh, well, then you decided that he ain't your king no more then. Because, I know it, because he, he blocked me from social media and then started posting him with other women and stuff. Oh, that's oh, over. Coming out, man. Coming out. That's Come over. On. That's, that's like, over. Even, that's me. over. That's I'm, over. Okay, it's, it's over. Done. How how well, old are y'all? How old are y'all? She wants to That's what's going how on. How old is he? I, how old is he and how old are you? I'm 35 and he's 50. <laughs> yeah, that's she over. She That's want so, him back so bad, right? Because listen, right. listen, listen. If he already showing up with other women, then they was already a part of his stable anyway. Yeah, not quite other women like that. It's like little waitress chicks and stuff to a, a restaurant he likes to go to. They all know me too, but it's like, dude. But he just told on. you. He said, listen, you don't want to be on this train no more? A train's for everybody. Exactly. So no, I don't. And I mean, again, you look you look sweet spirited, and I'm gonna be honest with you. You are a very pretty girl because I can see you in the back. Clearly, you are a very pretty girl, and you seem sweet spirited, and you don't look like you for the street. Like you don't have a bunch of tattoos and all of that other type of stuff or whatever. You're pretty normal. So, I mean, honestly, it's it's you got to come to terms with the fact that it's over. Got you. Okay. It's over. She like, and, and again, and like I'm, I'm all for my guys, but listen, bro. If you laying up with a chick and you over her house and all of a sudden she come to your house, y'all been talking for three years. Listen, there's no reason to call a, a chick a bitch. That's crazy. Like I would never call my girl a bitch. Well, <clears throat> unless we well, was, in, unless we was in a moment, but you know, well, one other time, unless she's, that was unless she's acting like a bitch. I would never call my chick a bitch. Now, I don't condone that, but what I was telling her was she said they've been dating for three years, and obviously mm -hmm. the bitch word is ha, wasn't habitual. He wasn't just, oh, damn, you like that pun? Habitual, <laughs> y'all like that. But anyway, it, yeah, it wasn't habitual. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 was a, it was a spur of the moment, and that's why I said that moment had to be very significant for him to say that if it was if he doesn't usually call you that and so uh I, I got one more question has he stayed has he been at your house while you wasn't there before yes oh you okay. was just being mean then because he didn't want to go out with you when you was door that <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's what that is she <laughs> she, she, she got, no, got mad okay. she didn't want to go out there while she was door <laughs> in order for us to get to the 
to the, you know, to the bottom of you got to tell the truth. You know? <laughs> okay. And, and, and I can take that. I can take that. And, and again, you know what, to be honest with you, like, I know, I just, you know, no, no, I get it. Because I understand women, they want you to go out with them. They play little games and they be like, hey, I'm about to go to this. And they want you to <laughs> say, no, don't go out, baby, stay in with me. Or they want you to say, oh, okay, I'm going to go out with you or whatever. And so I, yeah. I get it, whatever. But she, 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 again, she tried to run a power play. In but, but again, like once a certain line is crossed, I still think that. You got to be careful because if, if it get crossed again, listen, listen, bro. And that's the thing. Two things can be true at the same time. time. Two things can be true at the same time. You was out here playing games, but it then brought out that other side in you. And that's what happens when y'all get past the honeymoon phase. But then when the niggas start getting immature and he's starting to post waitresses and shit like that, man, ain't nobody got time for that shit, bro. We, yeah, we too old for this shit. I yeah, that's why I was like, oh, screw so. He know I don't care about social media anyway, but it's like, dude, really? You Where you at? What 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 what's, what state you at? What city you in? I'm in St. Louis. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Oh, that was that was that girl that somebody stole my car <laughs> when I. I'm like, somebody stole my car, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. That's what's up. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, you listen. You need body. to. You just need to move on, baby. Okay. Yeah, I'll move well, on. I don't even know how to move on because I I'm not like a. Who do you I'm hang like, out with outside of him? Failing, huh? Who do you hang out with um outside of him? I I have two friends. Uh, one of them, she's a criminal prosecutor. She's uh she's he he knows her. She's good people. And then um uh, my other good friend, she's been coming through like every day. She's uh. She's like a, a really, her her dad is a really big superstar. Yeah, you and just, honestly, you good. just need to go out and just be active um, and just and just do stuff that's fun. And then you'll just naturally meet people in the same way that you naturally met him. Well, I'm going to Super Bowl, so that'll be interesting. Are you really? That'd be dope. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be fun. Like, you keep me informed. Yeah, yeah my friends, uh, Dad's gonna. That'll be my first time on a private jet, so he's gonna Uber us there. But we gotta. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, who who taking you on a private jet? My my friend, her dad. He's like a. a I don't say his. I'm not gonna. Yeah, say no, no, his no, name no. Don't him. don't say his name. But he's like a really big. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I superstar. Got you. Yeah. Don't, so don't, don't say. He'll it. just. Uh, he said we can ride with him there, and then we'll just fly commercial back because he said he got to stay. So that's that's fine. That'll be interesting. I mean, it's, it might be weird because I know them through my ex. However, we became good good friends, good people. So we're like, it's like family. Um, but it's just you got, do you, do you, weird you, trying to date. Do you got my email address? Uh, I do not. I can find. I think I saw it on. Uh, it's just my name, Anton Daniels four one three at gmail dot com. Email me. Okay. okay. You got it. You wrote. You got gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah. Anton Daniels four one three at gmail dot com. Got you four one three at gmail dot com. I got you. All right. Yeah. Email me. We we'll kick it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I. I, I'm trying to figure out how to heal my little heart. I'm not used to, uh, of, uh, I hate to even say it like a failure, but, uh, you know. No, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You guys have a good night. All right. See you, baby. You too. Bye-bye. Right, She's such a sweet girl, Freezy. She sounds sweet. She sounds sweet and uh, she looks like she made the right steps. She cute she as said hell, she went, Well, you know I can't see, but you know, I can. I know you can. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> she she said she went to grief counseling and she made all the right steps and everything. I I just I think that she feels like she fumbled the bag with the dude, and she she's what she really wanted to ask us was how what's the best advice to get this dude back. That's what she really wanted to say, you know, but. 
No, I'm gonna fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you now because you pausing too long. I know you see something. No, she she's she's a good, sweet spirited person. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, you know, listen, man, when <clears throat> I want to tell, I say this to women all the time. I said this earlier in the live stream. The dating world is very dangerous for, for, for women, mm. especially black women. And so if something does happen like that, especially, especially if it's not an ongoing thing, like if, if a guy hauls off and calls you uh, out your name and you, and, and you and your heart know it's kind of warranted. Okay. We don't, we're not, me and Anton is not condoning a guy disrespecting women calling them out their name like that just absolutely right. not but she she knows her situation better than we do right that's why i was asking all those questions and you have to be honest with yourself and i try to tell women listen you got to be honest with you you got to be honest about the situation be honest about your actions and i re, um i recall when you asked her well what what why why did he call you a, what happened before he called you a bitch and she was like i don't even remember but I, I highly doubt that she didn't remember. She probably just didn't want to go into detail, which is understandable. Women, a no, lot of I mean, times, women, I mean, I wouldn't want somebody to tell somebody that somebody called me a broke bitch. <laughs> I want to lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. I mean, because the people need to understand, like, the context. Like, eh, yeah. whatever. I've been doing this for a long time. I understand. Let me see if I can get one more person up on here. Hold on. Let me see. Reesey, yeah. What up, Re what up, Reesey? Is that your regular name? Know what up. Reesey, man, you know what up, bro? I called, I called to talk to you, bro. What's up, bro? I don't really like you. You don't like who? You don't like me? I don't like, I don't like you, bro. What you don't like about me, bro? Yeah, hey, bro. How you? How you? You ain't qualified to give no dating advice. You've been with a sick your whole one sick your whole life for want to come up here and think you Kevin Samuels. You don't set your bitch ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, your name is Reese with a Y. <laughs> I'm the little fuck. <laughs> Nigga, you's a bitch. Hey, it's like my dick. Too. I can see you set your bitch ass up. <laughs> the nigga sitting in the dark. Nigga, he got he got dirty clothes in the back. Nigga talking shit. <laughs> This nigga, this nigga name is Reese. <laughs> oh. I be oh. trying to figure out how dudes. This nigga was get. sitting. In, this nigga was sitting in the dark with dirty clothes in the back, talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only reason I brought him up is, is I thought he was a girl because the nigga name was Reese. <laughs> Honest to God, nigga. I, I swear to God, dog. <laughs> Freezy. I brought the nigga up because I thought that it was a bitch. Because the nigga name was Reesey. And so I was I was trying to bring the nigga up. <laughs> the nigga, I turned it on and the nigga was sitting in the dark with dirty clothes in the back, nigga. I was like, what the fuck is going on? The nigga said, hey. I said, oh shit, this ain't no girl, nigga. This is a it's a grown man that's sitting in the dark with clothes in the back. Bruh. Oh man. That dude, that dude. I don't see how guys get what what, what you upset about. How you get why you up that upset? What you <laughs> mad about, man. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. I got another one. I might have another girl. Oh, they they dropped off. See, even the ladies in the chat said that they thought that was a girl because they their girlfriend's name is Reese, and that's their great grandma name. They said that that's their great grandma name. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's crazy. See, look, Trap said she, she did too. Her friend's name is Reese. I thought that that was a chick. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get somebody else up here. No, no, let's see what we can do. Yo, what up? Yo, can you hear me, Anton? Yeah, how you pronounce your name?
How you pronounce your name? See what I'm saying, bro? There's another person. Their name was Fiji. <laughs> Yo, Fiji. Stop playing, man. Fiji. Can you hear me, Fiji? Fiji, you got yourself muted. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? How how do you pronounce your name? Is it Fiji? No, it's F J I. What? But you can you can just say F J. You got a que- <laughs> you got a question for Fe- uh for Freezy, bro? Fre- yeah, Fre- Fiji. What the fuck is happening, Fiji. Fiji. bro? This nigga, this nigga, you got a question for Freezy? <laughs> say name is Elon Musk, son. X O. So your name <laughs> F J I. Yes. Uh... <laughs> 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 Freezy, I don't know what to do, man. I'm trying to figure this shit out, bro. Nah, these guys are hilarious, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Andy, Man, you on the line? You on the line with Freezy, bro? What you? What you and, got, for and, us, bro? You you murdered that last dude, yo. <laughs> that Reese dude, that Reesey greasy guy. What you got for me, big dog? Me, me, no, no. Listen, listen. Me, while you're insulting him, you're laughing at the same time because of the way how he was dissing you. <laughs> That's pretty cold, though. You know, that's pretty cold. <laughs> but uh, besides that, uh, this, I seen the, the topic home, boys. of the. I seen the topic of the conversation, in the thumbnail, and it's uh something about what is it? What is it again? Can you can you read it out for me? One yeah, okay, hold on. Give me a second. We're gonna move on to the next person. Just give me give give me a second. Let, let me try to filter. <laughs> I just had to get off the line, bro. bro. Freezy, I don't have time for this shit, bro. That's Reesey Homeboy. <laughs> they called in back to back. <laughs> I said, what? I said, your name Fiji? He said, no, it's F-J-I. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, bro. But we got somebody down here named Freezy Jr., bro. You want to? <laughs> yeah, I Brian swear Freezy to God, Jr. A dude out here named Freezy. Let me Jr. Do, let me hear let me hear from Freezy Jr. Go ahead. He hung up. He hung up. There's a oh. nigga over here that was named Freezy Jr. Bro, why Freezy Jr. want to talk to me? I don't know what's going on, bro. That's funny, Jesus Freezy Christ. Jr. That's crazy. I keep bringing these people up, thinking that they women. All right, let me see if I can get somebody up. Bailey, Bailey. Peace, King. I'm what a up, brother. Man? What up, big dog? How the brothers doing? Oh, man, I'm here, Jeez, man. I finally got made. Good, man. Yeah, chilling, chilling. What's the word, big dog? What's your thoughts? Hey, listen. I just want to tell you I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you and Freezy, man. You guys bring a lot of light and just I I, I love watching you. I, I'm the guy that, that you call Peace King Workout. Oh, that's what's up. Shout out to you, yeah, big dog. Yeah, man. And, um, it's so crazy how I got turned on to you, but um, man, I, I I love everything you do, my brother, and I just want to just send you them blessings because we really need this, man. We really need you. We need the brother Freezy. We need our community. We need our, our women to be as strong as possible, man, and we need that guidance, man. You know, I got my, and I, and I love that you believe in family. You know, that means so much, you know, especially the world we living in, man. We just... I just want us to band together. We need people like you, man. I love supporting you. I love spending my money with you. Thank you, man. I, just I came appreciate home from the you, feds. Bro. You know, I did, I did, yeah, man, I did six years. I want everybody to know. Just know yourself, use your wisdom. Man, I'm working in the factory right now, as you can see. Yeah, I see you, you know, back there, big dog. 12 hours a day. Get to it, bro. Get and, that bag. Get that you bag. You know, man, you can do it. Listen, brother, not to be funny. I made eighty three thousand dollars here last year. Right yeah. after that, and it's people out here credit, that's making and it's people out here that's making excuses like they can't go in and get it, and you almost making a hundred bands a year, bro. Come on, that's awesome. Salute. Come on, man. Listen, Salute. not not hey, man. Listen, we all got it in us, man. I see, I see my young brothers, and you inspire me to inspire others because there's so many men. Get in the books. I love when you talk about the Wall Street Journal, and like it's just the small things. I just want our people to believe. 
in ourselves. You know what yeah. I mean? Don't come on here and bash you because you're doing something. You ain't got to do this. You got it. Yep. You got it. And you and you give us your time, man. And I appreciate y'all. I know it's more people who want to get on the line. But, man, listen, thank you. Thank I you appreciate so you, too, fam. Me. And listen, man, thank you for being you. Keep getting to it, bro. Run that bag up, and we're going to meet each other on the other side. Bro. Absolutely. No question. I appreciate yeah, you. You always have my support. And I love giving you my money. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out nah, to you, big right, dog. Be easy, man. Thank Peace. you. Bro. That's facts, though. That's fact. I, let me it, tell you something. That's real. I love, bro. I love hearing black people talk like that. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I you don't hear black people say, "Man, I love giving you, bro." See, that's the type of shit that encourages me because yeah. it let me know there are people of the same demographic that get it. Yeah. That still get it, bro. Yep, I agree. You know? They're running the bag up and getting to it and taking care of business. Ain't making no excuses and he grinding out here in these streets. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to everybody that's, that's okay. getting that bag, bro. Man, I'm not bringing up nobody else with these weird ass names, bro. Fuck that. I'm tired. These dudes keep having these feminine names. I keep tricking me. I see a nigga down there named Flower Pot. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not tonight, nigga. That's why I don't be bringing people up on camera no more, bro. Because I don't know what these niggas be on, man. These niggas is weirdos, bro. Sitting in the dark, contemplating. Shit, bro. I can't do it, bro. These niggas is weird, man. So. Hey, man. It's two ways to look at it, though. You got to be doing something right if they're if they're utilizing their precious time, bro. That's one to, out of seven hundred and fifty thousand, almost a hundred million views last year. We're not tripping off that shit. That nigga was sitting in the dark with clothes, that's, that's what and that nigga's name was Reese. What a, what a, what an EY at the name of his name, bro. <laughs> that nigga been getting bullied. He been getting bullied his whole life, nigga. <laughs> Hell no. And then I see a nigga yeah, down man. there named Flower Pot. I ain't going for that shit, bro. You ain't about to finesse me. Flower Pot. That, that's a first. Nope. Flower nope. Pot. Nope. These niggas need to go back and watch the... Nah, we not doing it, bro. <laughs> we not doing it, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, yeah, make sure y'all subscribe to my dog, No Captivity, with Freezy, man. It's one of the best shows on the internet. No, No doubt. I appreciate that, Anton. Um, yeah, shout out to the Bad Chasers. Shout out to uh, the No Cap crew, of course. And uh, Anton, man, I appreciate you, bro. I really hey, do. Hey, man, all day. I you know, always had your back freezing. No, same here, bro. Same here, man. I'm going to let you get to it, dog. All right, bro. All right. All right, let me read some of the Super Chats. It's been an interesting night. A great show, but an interesting night, so I can get y'all to sleep. So we can be back on for the uh, for the Millionaire Morning Show. What up, D? What up, D? What up, what up, what up? Let me read some of these Super Chats, and then I'm going to get y'all out of here for the night. Fun show. A lot of people with feminine names, but we definitely going to get to these Super Chats because I got to acknowledge the people. Tech Noop. Shout out to Tech Noop. I appreciate you, big dog. I acknowledged you earlier, but I got to show you some love. AP says, time is hope, is hope lost. For us who are out here getting to it and want to find a good woman, what up, though? Shout out to my Detroit brethren. I don't think that hope is lost. I just think that we need to make sure that we hold these people accountable and then hold it down. Shout out to Black Man Unfiltered. Says, send me those, send me a pair of those damn frames, my guy. Man, these cost me a lot of money, big dog. You know what's so funny? I picked these up and I picked these up at the same time. These are the ones that y'all usually see me in. And then I picked these up at the same time. Same day, same time. Uh, the bag is crazy. Shout out to Black Man Unfiltered. I appreciate you. Anthony Mitchell is in the building with the 10 ball and hold me down. Thank you, Ant. We got a couple of super chats for uh, said my thoughts, your words. Actually, thanks for saying it. Shout out to you. And then he also came back and said, talk our ish, AD, as a man. I appreciate you. Let me give a round of applause for this next person. Shout out to Wrench Turner, says, cook black man, cook for the 50 ball. You know, I got to acknowledge the people that hold me down. Your car says, just plastering around a collection plate. Thank you, your car. 
Kate Wood says, that's not Anton Daniels. That's Tyrone Yellow Black. Tyrone Yellow Bus Daniels. <laughs> he said this super chat when I was um, showing y'all, when I was showing y'all my, um, this right there. <laughs> Uh, black community whistleblower says Anton was good, yo freezy. Hey man, I'm about to make that junk a trait. Like I'm about to make that so popular. Hey yo freezy. Watch, I'm about to make that freezy. That no captivity with freezy popular. Shout out to you, I appreciate you, big dog. Alex is in the building. Says I'm a stepfather, fellas. Don't do it. That's a fact, though. Facts. Julius Jermaine says, my ex had three kids to my zero. Hold me accountable. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Deshaun Love says, what's good? Just showing support. I've been busy, but I'm here tonight. Respect to you and Freezy. Shout out to you. God motivates people is in the building with the 10 ball. Says, stepfathers get a bad rap from Anton, but in reality, it takes a different type of man to understand DNA that's not theirs. Yes, a simp. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you say it. Um, it's not a different type of man. It's a man that is getting finessed that really don't understand his value. It's a man that's getting finessed that truly does not understand his value, my guy. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, don't let nobody finesse you into thinking that it makes sense for you to go out here and save another man's kids. That's crazy. Rod says... I was raised by a stepfather. As much as I am grateful for him raising me, I told him I could never be a stepfather, and he respected it too. That's because he understands. He know what the heck is going on. Alboa Sanima says, I am still waiting to, to regret being single with no kids at 45. I am now the guy who gives an ear to married guys through the hell, uh, well, through the hell, through hell with their wives. Shout out to you. I appreciate you, big dog. I see you overseas somewhere. I appreciate you. Um, what else we got going on? Listen, man. Listen, don't let nobody throw y'all out y'all off y'all square. Don't let nobody um, convince y'all to do anything other than whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. Stay on your purpose. Stay on your grind. Um, and don't get distracted and run that check up. Facts. All right. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, I'm going to check y'all out for the Millionaire Morning Show. Let's run up that bag. Let's get to that money. And let's put on the best shows on earth. I love y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all in the morning. Peace.